Hi, it's Peter Coffin. Um, I did a stream last night responding to Vosh's defense of himself, the context video. And I want to give a, a quick preface. I did not watch this video before doing this stream. So there's a couple times I got I got pretty pretty damn mad. I'm a parent. Uh, you can imagine my investment in this topic and why I would get mad. Uh, but also this is it's it's really long. Uh, I was on stream for like four and a half hours. There's a couple of minor provisos. I, I skipped over the Mr. Girl part because, quite frankly, I just kind of don't care. Like, a lot of this was was a filibuster or a gish gallop, the type of thing that these types would criticize Jordan Peterson for doing back in the day. I, I mean, that's a thing that I criticized Jordan Peterson for doing back in the day. And I still think that that's a problem. It's just, uh, it's definitely him doing that. Also, really quick before we get into it, next Saturday, February 24th at 4 p.m. Uh, is the premiere of my new documentary, Plato is a Bitch, AI and Bomber Guy, um, which you can purchase the pamphlet version of now. Uh, you'll get it before the documentary even comes out. And you'll be able to read what the hell I'm going to say. It's a documentary that covers uh, platonic elitism, creativity, plagiarism via H. Bomber Guy, and artificial intelligence. Uh, I think it's probably my best documentary to date. I really want to make sure people see it. Uh, so without wasting any more time, let's get into this Vosh shit. Well, Vosh has made a bunch of what he calls ineffective arguments about child pornography and uh, whether or not it is good or bad. He says that he made them uh, in order to demonstrate that commodity production was exploitative and that if we're revolted by child porn we should also be revolted by cobalt mining except for the problem with that is that child porn can only be the sexual abuse of children whereas cobalt mining could be done without any exploitative practices i mean it isn't but it could be it's not inherently exploitative like the creation of a regular either um, necessary or luxury commodity isn't inherently abusive, whereas child sex abuse material is. So he spent a long time making these arguments, and then he spent a long time saying that these arguments were dumb, and that he made bad arguments for the points he was trying to make. And then about a week and a half ago, he, while broadcasting, accidentally showed that he had cartoon child sex abuse material on his hard drive. And uh, since then, he's been trying to remake all of his old arguments for some reason, while also uh, self-flagellating by saying he's dumb and that his voice sounded bad in the old days, that he was aggressive, and stuff like that. The problem, though, is that he made all of these arguments that ultimately de-emphasized the harm of child sex abuse material, equating it to any other commodity. Did that for years, defended it for years, still is ultimately defending it in this video and had cartoon child porn. It, it kind of makes all the arguments look like serious problems. Like that's, that's essentially what's going on here. And this video is him uh, here. Let me show you. Let me show you exactly what this video is. Okay. Yeah. This is bad. Uh, we got to definitely write a song about how we, we do not diddle kids. Do not diddle kids, it's no good diddling kids. There is no quicker way for people to think that you are diddling kids than by writing a song about it. You gotta write a song that says, ooh, I wouldn't do it with anybody younger than my daughter. No, little kids gotta be big, older than my wife, younger than my daughter, something like that. Don't write a song about that. No, I'm cloudy, I got a headache. I'm kidding. Don't worry. We're actually going to react to this. Again, it's a two-hour, let me explain, rather than a 10-minute, I was wrong. You should simply say, I was wrong. You should get off the internet, take a few months off, find some help, work on yourself, and maybe come back. But no, instead, we get this look. This is a video I probably should have made a long time ago. There are two main reasons why I haven't. For one, everything we're about to talk about has been discussed over and over and over again on this channel uh, in, in live streams. And 
So here is one of the points that I've made. Addressing this, simply addressing it, doesn't fucking matter, sir. That's not a reason you should have made this video. That's, it's not a reason. You've already made this video, I guess. That's what you're saying here. You're saying, I've already made this video. Some of it has been discussed to death. To death? Some of it has been discussed to death. Gotta emphasize that. Coming off good here. ...with the topic has caused it to have a disproportionate influence both on my community and on the way people outside of my community perceive me and my channel. Yeah, the fun thing about that, when you make arguments for years and years and years about how child sex abuse material is on the same level as cobalt mining via slave labor or anything else, child labor, whatever, and then it, it turns out that on your hard drive there exists cartoon child porn. Yeah, it's gonna affect how people see your channel, sir. The second main reason I've been hesitant to make this video is because experience has taught me that generally speaking, if folks want to hate you or distrust you or whatever else, it's pretty difficult to convince them otherwise. Even if you've got a good point to make, just the attempt you do not have a good point to make, sir. You do not have a good point to make, sir. You are going to explain to us why your cartoon child porn is fine and why you should continue to have the kind of influence that you have. Can come across as kind of self-incriminating. You actually ground them further in the positions they already have. Yes, sir. The people who need to hear it won't listen, and the people who will listen don't need to hear it again. Let's get right to it then. Let's not waste time. Well, I hate to drop this on the people who just innocently watch me for my political content and don't engage in any broader community drama. But some folks online have called me a pedophile. I haven't called you a pedophile, and I want to make sure that people understand I'm not going to call this man a pedophile. I am going to say, however, that he has made ridiculous goddamn arguments about child porn for years and years and years and ended up with cartoon child porn on his hard drive, which was revealed by him last week. I hope you're not a pedophile. I hope this is some kind of lapse in judgment, but you are making an hour uh, plus a, two, a nearly two hour video about how you're not a pedophile, sir. There is context where you have decided that you need to explain to people that you are not a pedophile. Now, this in and of itself isn't actually that noteworthy with the political climate being what it is. Folks are getting accused of being pedophiles on Twitter left and right. It's pretty common. Yes, I understand that people call people pedophiles for stupid reasons. Absolutely idiotic, stupid reasons that have nothing to do with pedophilia. Yes, I know. I'm aware of that. I've been called a pedophile because I said inflation was causing the price of chicken at Walmart to go up. However, you're making a two hour video to explain that despite the fact you had cartoon child porn on your hard drive, you are not a pedophile. Again, I am not calling you a pedophile. I am saying there is something seriously wrong here and you need help. Some people have called me this way more insistently and a lot louder. So why? What was the what was the reason for the emphasis cut there? Stop acting like this is a normal video, you fucking freak. Get help. This is just a normal fucking video for this man. It's a normal video. I have to make an argument. Uh, I have to establish exactly why uh, I am not a pedophile for having that. Let's make my completely normal, nearly two hour video about that. Self-defense can come across as kind of incriminating even if it's accurate or well-intentioned. True! Yeah, even though I've gone over all this before uh, on stream or in videos, I wasn't exactly jumping at the bit to it make, doesn't a, make it better. why I'm not a pedophile video. That's not... <laughs> That's, it's, it's a rough subject, is what I'm saying. You know, that's one of the reasons why it's so effective as a smear of- It's effective as a smear because you have cartoon child porn on your hard drive. That's why it's effective. You lose. Good day, sir.
So let's not waste any more time. We've got a lot to go through. What then is oh, yeah, this two hours, video not going to be a waste of time at all? What do I have to say and why do I want to say it? What are my goals in making the video? Well, the gist of it is this. When people accuse me of being a pedophile, they usually do so while presenting pieces of evidence. Often there are people calling you a pedophile. I'm not. I'm calling you a fucking sicko. You have cartoon child porn on your hard drive and you're defending it. You're defending yourself rather than apologizing, disappearing and getting help. These are the things you should do. Clips from my live streams that make me look bad. While I do think that a lot of the claims and pieces of so-called evidence used against me range from being uncharitable to outright dishonest, the fact remains that I have said some incredibly stupid fucking shit on this channel, especially really early on, like right when I started streaming. And I don't fault anyone for seeing clips from that and, and being suspect of me. It's, it's not clips of that, sir. It's the fact that you had cartoon child porn on your hard drive. Why make this video? Why make this video? It's more a matter of charity. You know, I have to go and, and, and look at these clips and explain what do they mean? You know, what was I thinking? What was I saying? Are, is, is this clip like so dishonestly cut that, you know, no reasonable person would interpret it? Let's be as charitable to Vosh as he has been to everyone else. You get what you give. Don't give up. You got a reason in you. Whatever that fucking song is. You only get what you give, sir. It is looking bad of seeing the full context or uh, was I saying really stupid shit and I'm going to have to like work yes. to explain what my thought process was at the time. And it's past that point, that. it's up to other people to either believe my charitable explanations or believe significantly less charitable ones. You know, that's up to them. Your explanations don't matter. You're explaining points that you made, which have been contextualized by you having cartoon child porn on your hard drive. Shut the fuck up. I've said I'll also cover some of the more bullshit accusations because I, 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 I don't know. They're transparently bullshit. A lot of them. No, the reason this is happening is you had cartoon child porn on your hard drive already dislike me to, to read anything from them. But, it, you know, a lot of it is that. So I, I need to sort of point that out, too. So as far as I can see, there are four groups of people that I'm addressing here, more or less. The first group is my core audience, the people who have seen me address this and provide context for this. The people whom he has inoculated against this. The people whom he has spent a large amount of time telling this is what they mean when they say, I'm making arguments about child porn. It doesn't matter what it sounds like. What I am saying is this. If they tell you, no, it's not this, they are being bad faith. Would I be streaming if you didn't have cartoon child porn on your hard drive? No. The reason why I haven't presented cases against the arguments that you've made in the past is because there wasn't any kind of smoking gun, a reason why you have to talk about this. I don't want to talk about it. However, you provided a smoking gun, sir. That's the problem here. It's not any of the arguments that you intend to address. It's not anything that you can explain away. And deal with this bullshit a million times. For a lot of them, all of this is a repeat. Yeah, the second group of people it. is people who just fucking hate me. I, I really don't know if there's much I can yeah. do to get across to those guys. I would like to. I really do think a lot of the hate is misguided. But Why do people just fucking hate you, Vosh? Is it because you are a good faith actor who makes good points? Or do you think that it might be the types of points you make and the context of you having a cartoon child board? Could that be it? That's it. The third group is the massive, disaffected, disengaged, entertainment-hungry drama vultures who are just here because they think it's fun to watch people squirm. I, I see you. I don't like seeing you squirm. You know what? Here's the other thing. You're not squirming. This is not you squirming. You are acting like this is a normal video. You are acting fine. You're not bothered by this. At least you're not presenting as bothered by this. That's fucking weird. 
plan on doing uh, much squirming, but there will be lots of self-debasement. So uh, to, to you and to the people who just hate me, if you want to see self-debasement from me, there will be that. I don't. I want to see you apologize and disappear while you go get help. That's it. I don't want to see you uh, take your bad spankings. I don't want to see you take your punishment. I don't want to see you take your medicine. I don't want to see uh, the cod liver oil in the spoon go into your mouth and you swallow it. I don't want to see that. The liberal order, all this shit, it's always about like, well, let me pay my penance and things will be. F no, you need to say you're sorry. You were wrong. You need to stop making content and you need to go get help. Yeah, and, and I know that even making a video like this can come across as pretty damning, just innately, but I really do hope that you take yes. it, uh... I wouldn't do it with anybody younger than my daughter. No, little kids gotta be big, older than my wife, than my daughter, something like that. Yeah. You shouldn't have made this video, unless it was 10 minutes of you saying, I was wrong, I'm gonna stop making videos for a while while I go to therapy. Seriously, and try to be charitable, if for no reason other than because it is a pretty serious topic. And last, uh, the fourth and maybe the smallest group of people watching this video are people who are genuinely neutral. Or maybe they're from the normie side of my audience. Uh, you know, they don't engage with the drama and the community stuff that much. I don't know. This will probably be a weird one for them, but nonetheless, welcome. It's a pretty wide range of people as audiences go, but I'll do my best to explain things and go through all the drama in a way that's clear and straightforward, but also doesn't drag on too long. Now, without further ado, it's two hours. <laughs> Uh, uh, let me just address uh, the cartoon child porn on my hard drive in a way that doesn't go on for too long. Two hours later. Let's get to the content. We'll start with the absolute worst of it, the monstrously stupid argument that I made way back when I first started streaming that has since haunted me and irreparably tarnished my reputation. Now, this clip is the one that I see cited most often when people are accusing me of being a pedophile. I have yet to hear a convincing moral or legal argument as to why possession of child pornography should be illegal. Actual child pornography. Like I said, uh, pretty bad. This clip is from right after I started streaming, so a significant portion of my career as a live streamer has been spent providing context for the clip over and over to many people and many audiences. I've addressed it so many times that it's, it's, it's turned into like a, a kind of running joke in my community, like a, a, a rake that Addressing I'm cursed to keep walking better. into over and over and it hits me in the head. I often see people outside of my community, people who have seen this clip but not seen me address it, mock the idea that any context that I or anyone else could provide could possibly explain away something that sounds that bad. Uh, it's because there is no context that makes it better. But I, I'll, I'll give you the reason why in a moment. Uh, I, I talked about this in my video, but let's let's address it again. Why not? When they see me or my fans uh, say that this or any other clip has been taken out of context, it comes across to them as an effort to shoo away legitimate suspicion, you know, chastising people for having an opinion on something that looks bad. Like, you see a clip that looks bad of me, and then I, or a fan of mine, comes in and we're like, uh, no, you know, you need to familiarize yourself with, with like 50 hours of stream lore before you can have an opinion on that. I have seen people weaponize calls for context in that way, so... This is not the same thing. I'm gonna let you give all of your context right here, and I'll bet you anything, it will mean nothing others for being like kind of suspicious of that or, or, or not taking it very seriously. Some people are just going to tune out right there. It's a regular video, guys. Let's do the emphasis cut. Now, don't get me wrong. The clip is bad. It's uh, rhetorically bad. It's logically bad. It's, it's obviously optically bad. And the broader argument that it's pulled from are bad in all of those ways, too. Uh, but as for what the clip and the argument that it's pulled from say about me, uh, I would like to make the case, if I may, that it does implicate me, but not as a pedophile, rather uh, as a, a fucking idiot debate bro brain poisoned jackass let me tell you what does implicate you however um and it is also context that alters your argument a little bit um it's the cartoon child porn on your hard drive because i took a perfectly fine argument i think that you know when i explain it it'll the argument itself will make perfect sense at least uh, and i ruined it the argument itself will make perfect sense oh see the fun thing about it is materially it doesn't my second video is about how the argument itself is actually not just a bad argument, but an argument that takes two categorically different things and lumps them into one thing, de-emphasizing the harm of one. With edgy, contrarian, devil's advocate nonsense. So let me explain. I just started live streaming and I was far, far more argumentative and belligerent and arrogant then than I am now, if you can believe that. No, you're a fucking worm. This is that passive aggressive, I know that I'm not supposed to be loud and angry. That's how you're addressing this. I know, I know that I am not supposed to be loud and angry. Like, no, uh-uh, you're not belligerent. You're a worm. Over the background of my mediocre Dead Cells gameplay, an argument with chat on the subject of 
foreign labor and unethical production was getting increasingly heated. Just in case anyone watching doesn't know, many of the products that we buy from American companies on American store shelves are produced through supply chains that take advantage of what we could consider a... <laughs> it's last week tonight, everybody! Dun, 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 I know that's, um, that's um, Daily Show. I don't remember the last week tonight one. Children as young as eight picked coffee beans on farms supplying Starbucks. Yes, that is bad. Do you know what doesn't need to happen in order to pick those coffee beans on farms supplying Starbucks? Do you know what isn't inherent in the picking of those coffee beans? Child labor, slave labor, whatever you want to uh, finger as the problem. And yes, I said finger on purpose. Those things aren't inherent. They're not inherent. You can, let's say, change the mode of production uh, to socialism. You can uh, appropriate the uh, the value created socially as opposed to individually you can do that but you know what you can't do that with child sex abuse material which you had cartoons of on your hard drive unethical business practices you know like bad workers rights stuff often this takes the form of sweatshop labor a practice near ubiquitous for example in the garment industry where sewing work is difficult to fully automate this isn't just a foreign problem though uh, there are garment sweatshops where workers make less than two dollars an hour operating right now in los angeles for as an example this man is trying to say his argument is right. But American companies profit from even worse abuses. The mining of cobalt and the harvesting of chocolate and palm oil. Fucking cobalt shit. Again, do you know how a mine works? You can use adults to mine. Do you know what you can't use adults for? You know what you can't use adults for? Do you know what you can't use adults for? Child sex abuse material. It's not dependent on the mode of production. Those are three practices that are especially notorious for their use. Uh, uh, oh, by the way, there's, there's cartoon child sex abuse material on his hard drive. Forgot to say it. Sorry. Sorry. Of, of child labor. Frequently child slavery, frankly. You know, in practice often. A, a non-inherent thing to, uh, to commodities. Commodities that are not inherently abuse. The vast majority of commodities, uh, both necessary and luxury, most of those are not abuse by nature. Child sex abuse material is, and you had cartoons of it on your hard drive. Just child slavery. American companies profit enormously from this because uh, these, you know, abusive work conditions, it, it keeps the cost of harvesting materials of acquiring raw product relatively low. And as a consequence of this, the suffering of children is built into the fabric of our economy. Uh, no, it is not inherent. Like, it's not automatic that cobalt mining and uh, the picking of Starbucks, coffee beans, those things are not inherently something that you need children to be abused to do. Exploited workers broadly, to be sure, but like I said, it's a widespread problem. I believed that in a just world, the American government would set a global standard for labor rights by barring companies from selling their products in the United States if they or other companies they bought their product from fell below a certain minimum standard for labor rights. Uh, I, I still think that would be great, by the way, as complicated as it would be to implement and as unlikely as it is to happen. It's, it's a doable thing, you know, that's not like a... The argument you are making is bunk. It's not that it's a stupid argument for a good thing. It's an argument where you are equating something that is a problem not due to the mode of production with something that is a problem due to the mode of production. And in equating child sex abuse material, not a problem due to the mode of production, by equating that to something that is a problem of uh, the mode of production, cobalt mining, coffee bean picking, what the fuck ever you want. You are putting this in a situation where no ethical consumption under capitalism covers for child sex abuse material. There's precedent for that kind of action. It would make the world a better place. So anyway, there I was, uh, belligerent, angry from arguing with chat. However much of a debate bro I'm known for being today, I swear to God, I was so much worse back then. I wanted to construct an argument that would effectively and succinctly convey the severity of the problem. You incorrectly did that, sir. The severity of the problem is not as such that individual child sex abuse is equivalent. It is worse, actually. That is worse than the thing that you're saying. What you're doing is de-emphasizing the harm of sexual abuse of children. 
That's what you're doing with this argument. You're making an argument that de-emphasizes the harm of something, puts it on the same level with another thing that you excuse with the argument of no ethical consumption under capitalism. Do you get why that's a problem? Because as I recall, at several of the times where you've made this argument, you've talked about how you, a streamer, has a computer with cobalt in it. You are excusing um, the unethical consumption because there is no ethical consumption under capitalism, which is why, by the way, I, I would highly recommend people go back and watch that video. I made an argument why talking about the ethics of consumption is horseshit, uh, both consumption and production. I don't care. In order to have society, you need both production and consumption. You need both of those things. So therefore, the way that we do those things isn't like unless you want to not have society, it's irrelevant. It's going to happen one way or the other. We don't need to excuse ourselves by saying no consumption is ethical and therefore we don't deserve the blame for it because we can't choose to consume ethical things. It's not even a concern. It shouldn't be an argument we make. It shouldn't be something we talk about. I do not care about the ethics of consumption at all. This isn't just a stupid argument. It's an argument that actively um, reinforces an ideology that it is okay to have a craving that is antisocial and uh, against, what is it called, civil society? That, uh, that, 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 thing, that thing? ...find human suffering is with the regular products that we buy and use every day. Uh, shock value was essential because I needed to prove how... Shock value was not... See, he's excusing it. It was essential. It was essential. I needed to do it. I had to... <laughs> I had to make the argument where child sex abuse material uh, is on the same level as cobalt mining. I had to make that. This, this is why idealism is horseshit. We cannot make ethical arguments about why capitalism is a problem. The arguments I make about capitalism being a problem revolve around uh, the crisis of overproduction. I made that argument in my video. It's probably going to be more succinct there, but I'll say it here. When you have the capitalist mode of production, which is brought about by a fundamental contradiction, at least according to Marx and Engels' criticism, which is the socialization of production, the appropriation of the product and therefore the profit is individualized, retained from feudalism. That's a contradiction, and that contradiction creates class, okay? If there wasn't such thing as accumulation and the progression of technology, this wouldn't be a problem. However, both of those things do exist. Human labor, by the way, is what gives a commodity its value. Human life is valuable. Your time, your effort, it's valuable because you have a limited amount of time on this earth, and you giving that up is you creating value. That's what value is. And as a commodity requires less of that to exist, the commodity itself becomes less valuable. That's why automation makes things cheaper. However, it also puts people out of the job. So the working class, the subordinate class, has less wealth and therefore has less power in the consumer market. And as this compounds over time, the subordinate class's wealth goes down faster than the price of goods and services. No matter how low it goes, zero is always going to be lower than that. That is the problem of capitalism. That is why capitalism cycles through crises. Like, that's not an ethical argument at all. It's a mathematical one. So any argument that you're going to make about the ethics of capitalism is going to fall on deaf ears to me. And then when you use an ethical argument to flatten child sex abuse in comparison to cobalt mining or picking coffee beans, there's a really big fucking problem with that. Okay? Because those things are not problems of the mode of production. And speaking of shock value, an example already exists of something so inextricably tied up in human suffering that both its production and possession are illegal, child sexual abuse material. If we already know something that harmful should just be excised from society, couldn't we do the same for products that we know are made with child slavery at the very least? The parallel felt clear to me, and I wanted to really drive home the hypocrisy of the people arguing against me who said you were downplaying. There's no hypocrisy. If you take everything that I just said and apply it, what is hypocritical about saying that child sex abuse material has a fundamental abuse. These are, these are different problems, sir. Completely different problems. Point is, I think uh, with a material argument, it's very clear what the problem 
of your argument is, and it's not that it's a stupid argument, sir. I guess the issue with the whole child slavery intertwined in our, you know, economy thing. So, in fact, and this is going to be a real hot take, I have yet to hear a convincing moral or legal argument as to why possession of child pornography should be illegal. Actual child pornography. How's that for a hot fucking take? How's that for a hot fucking take? Look, no! What context makes this okay? You said, I have yet to hear a compelling reason, ethical or legal, why possession of child pornography is wrong. Okay, sorry, there is no context that makes that an okay statement. None. Zero. Zilch. You can't say anything that makes that okay. Now to clarify on this take, as I feel it necessary to do so, we do not, in this country, um, typically uh, uh, criminalize people who have procured me uh, media or resources which were the product of abuse. Um, it is not illegal to own necklaces that have um, slave diamonds or whatever. What are they called? Um, or, or, yeah, blood diamonds. Diamonds can be mined without the sexual abuse of children. All of our clothes produced by sweatshops, our computers, the silicon and lithium mined from literal fucking slaves. In our society, we have already deemed that people are not responsible for the mechanisms by which the media they consume and the content they uh, engage with are produced. You like that argument? Ooh, you like that? You like that moral culpability? You're all worse than fucking CP owners, and I am too. Do you like that? No ethical consumption under capitalism. Shit sucks, right? But if we accept that argument for slave labor, then we definitely have to accept it for child pornography. No, we don't. And I just explained to you, materially speaking, why. Nah, it was bad. I know it was bad. That was, what a stupid argument. I'm such a big dummy. I was just a big old dummy. I was dumb, 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 dumb. I made a big dumb in my poo-poo pants. My dumb goal here was to spark indignant out. My dumb, dumb, poopy pants goal here. <laughs> you had cartoon child sex abuse material on your hard drive. To make people who downplay the immorality of unethical supply chains to reflect on the harm they were enabling through comparison. Again, the problem of supply chains is not ethical. The problem, uh, like, yes, you can argue that the way that these things happen, it is unethical. Yes, absolutely. It is unethical, but it's not why the mode of production will change. It's not because everybody gets together and goes, you know what? I just don't, I don't like the way we're doing our supply chains. I don't like it. We got, what can we do? What can we do about about this this supply chain thing? I, I just think that it's it's gross. Or for them to you know uh, bluster and go, no, no, they're different. Child slavery is fine, actually, and, and look bad. You know, it was meant to be like an invective, like something like oh, it gets it, you know it, it it's it's punchy. It gets right through to people. Obviously, it didn't work. The only person I succeeded in making look bad was me. I'm sorry, guys. I made a big poopy in my pants. I'm sorry. I poo pooed in my drawers. I poo pooed. I mama mama found the pee pee drawer. Because I really, really want to make sure that I'm being clear with my thoughts here because I don't like being misunderstood and being misunderstood kind of feels like my job sometimes. Uh, just in case the bad logic of my brilliant little devil's advocate doesn't... The bad logic. My poo-poo pee-pee logic. I'm bad. I'm just bad. I'm bad except my flagellation. Except my self-flagellation. It's not coming across. Let me give you an example. Imagine that I was a, a vegan back when I started my channel, and I was angrily arguing with my audience about the hypocrisy of America making animal abuse a felony, uh, but also allowing millions and millions and billions of animals to spend their whole lives in torturous captivity before being slaughtered for meat. I'm flustered, and I want to make a point. So I start saying that, you know, hey, if we're all being morally consistent here, we wouldn't even have animal abuse laws, huh? Why protect animals at all, I would say, since we're clearly so okay with them being tortured. And Here's a fun thing. Um, a human and an animal aren't the same. They're not the same thing. Like, not even from an ethical perspective. And you know what? From an ethical perspective, I actually completely agree. I, I don't think that animals should be abused. But uh, I also don't think they're the same thing as people. I don't think this is analogous to your argument. Because again, we're talking about materially different things. That's the problem killed in mass. Why not be consistent and just do away with all animal abuse laws too, huh? Huh? Of course, in that example, I wouldn't really be arguing for the removal of animal abuse laws. I'd be pointing out an apparent hypocrisy in animal welfare norms with an abrasive devil's advocate. You know, the point would be to get people to sort of like angrily confront my position or reflect on theirs. Likewise, in real life, five years ago, I wasn't actually arguing for the legalization of child sexual abuse material. I was pointing out an apparent hypocrisy in child welfare norms and our allowance of materials produced through the harm of children. But, I mean, interestingly enough, he did actually have cartoons of bestiality as well. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, maybe, maybe from his perspective, it is a very similar argument. I don't know. In our 
stores, you know, with an abrasive devil's advocate. Abrasive and bad. It's so bad. I have spent the past five years explaining it. And to be clear, it really is a bad argument. But you know, a lot of guys in your position who are these kind of like philosophical types, they want to talk about the whole child porn thing and how it's just as bad as um, slave labor, I think was your argument. Yeah. So that's one of the Perhaps. great philosophical debates of our time. Just can't keep, uh, can't keep it. I don't know. What is it? Look how fucking happy he is to address it. Like his argument is that it's been addressed a million times. You know why? Because he fucking loves doing it. Do you see that fucking grin on it? Let's go back to that real quick. Look at how happy he is. Look how fucking he's like, yeah, it is that. It is one of the greatest philosophical debates of our time. Yeah. Can't keep uh can't keep it. I don't up. know what is it about smart guys that they feel like I must rationalize child porn. Like do you feel like it just um I mean first of all just for starters that was heavily taken out of context, correct? Oh yeah, yeah. Like I mean obviously it's gotten thrown through the the, the dishwasher a bit um as internet arguments go. The the basic like the basic idea of the argument, you know, the, the fundamental, which is like it's it's bad to 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 participate in the consumption of any product which as a necessary prerequisite for its production mandates the abuse of children Every, everyone would agree with that unless people are literally pro child abuse i guess but most everyone would agree with that people just don't like the direct comparisons because a in my case it wasn't the most accurate one um due to some like nitty-gritty detailed bits uh and two it's like deliberately provocative right and that's the problem you know that comes up the same reason people make comparisons to hitler during arguments it's like the most provocative thing you can get to no it's hitler is is is, is again it's not the same thing and here's a here's a fun thing that Beetle Moses and the other guy didn't know about uh, at the time. Um, it was the cartoon child sex abuse material that was on your hard drive. Like you jump right through it. Like, well, how do I make a point about why X or Y about capitalism is bad? You know, cracks knuckles. Okay, I've got yeah. one for you. You know, and and if and even if you're bulletproof on how you phrase that argument, people are going to get mad at you. But I wasn't. And if you're not, people will get more mad at you. And I have had to explain it so so many times. Oh my god. Oh, the burden, the burden, the burden of explaining why I sound like I'm defending child sex abuse material. The burden, the burden. The vegan gains debate, that's a solid F. Not only did I not make my arguments well, in one point I made my anti-child pornography argument so poorly that it got clipped out of context and people are using it as uh, an argument that I support child pornography. My basic argument is that, like, oh, why is child material bad? Really bad? Okay, if fans edit together a compilation of you saying, why is child pornography bad, there's a problem, all right? This doesn't make you look good. There is a compilation where, in sync, a grid of you, like the Brady Bunch, says together, why is child pornography bad? to hurt children because it hurts people to produce it yeah? producing child porn requires harming a child the argument i'm making is that it frustrates me that liberals recognize child pornography is bad great nice well done but then they're really really defensive of like global uh, uh commodity production chains that involve um child slave labor like we'll talk that off like really 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 uh, readily you know like oh well there's no other choice oh well we don't have to care about that oh yeah this is a two-hour video showing that he just cannot stop talking about if child pornography is is okay Instead of explaining it, you could have said, yeah, I tried to make cobalt mining look bad uh, and it wasn't it, it was a bad argument because ultimately it made child pornography not look as bad. It made it look like on the level of cobalt mining and it's not because the mode of production would not fix child sex abuse material. I'm sorry. That was a dumb, bad thing. And, and I should have never done it like you drop it you drop it you fucking drop it you don't talk about it you don't justify it you don't explain it you fucking stop making the argument you're making the argument in this video like you you say ah it's such a bad argument it's such a bad argument you're making the argument yeah, dude like cobalt that's mined up is done by child slave but uh, you know like whatever that's just how the economy goes oh uh, dude whatever like we make computers they look sick bro like don't think about it so that was the I, argument that i was making oh. originally I, I don't know. Me personally, I would have tried to find another example. Yeah, me too. Like, hey, like, no, hey, me too, buddy. The reasons for this argument being rhetorically and optically bad are pretty obvious, I'd say. But I wanted to explain why it's also logically bad. The parallel between child sexual abuse material and commodities made with child labor is tenuous, Ooh. mostly due to a huge gulf in personal moral culpability. Right? I, I mean, uh, no, uh, uh, nope. It's not. It's not a moral thing. It's. It's literally not a moral thing. It is a material thing. Again, you can ameliorate the mode of production, and that does not 
uh, it doesn't change what child sex abuse material is. It's abuse. It's it's literally abuse material. It's sex abuse material. Child sex abuse material. Hopefully that's obvious. It certainly wasn't to me back then. I still believe the presence of child labor in our supply chains is a, a massive issue. But, you know, I've stopped making that yeah, point no in shit. such stupid, pointlessly abrasive ways. You know, there's a sickness. It's not. No, it's not. Abra it's not that it's abrasive. And it's not that there's a moral problem here. You could have watched my video and stolen my argument here. You probably should have. Uh, because it would make you sound smart and would also make it sound like you understand the actual problem with your argument. Uh, but you didn't do that. Instead, you said something about morals or ethics. And guess what? That it, it literally doesn't matter. It literally doesn't fucking matter. And unless you're completely retracting everything and you're saying, I was wrong. I'm never going to do this again. I'm going to go get help. I'm not going I'm not going to continue trying to explain and defend this shit. I'm not going to keep making the argument, which is what he's doing here, except for he's saying it's bad while he's making it. No, absolutely not. In the mind of the very specific kind of debate bro that I used to be, where you believe that if using the most inane... He's such a, he's such a better debate bro now. Like, here's the thing. Debate bros became passe. People made fun of debate bros. It became a bad thing. So he's trying to claim that he's not that, but he's just as fucking terrible, bad faith, smarmy shithead that he's ever been. Hyperbolic shock value arguments. Uh, it, it makes you seem smarter. I'm sorry. I can explain what I was thinking at the time, but I can't for the life of me. Uh, it, it makes what you was, using sorry. the most inane, sorry. hyperbolic shock value arguments. Uh, it, it makes you seem smarter. I'm sorry. I can explain what I was thinking at the time, but I can't. I was a weird I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't. I, I got to see that again. Arguments. Uh, it, it makes you seem smarter. I'm sorry. I can explain what I was. OK, so here's the problem with it. The I'm sorry is its own clip. There's a cut and then the words I'm sorry and then the next thing. And it's it's let's listen to what comes after it hyperbolic shock value arguments uh it, it makes you seem smarter i'm sorry i can explain what i was thinking at the time but i can't for the life of me understand what i was thinking if that makes any sense yeah all edge and no point no you know exactly what you were fucking thinking like you just told us what you were th you just tried to explain what you were thinking for like a long time Oh, and, and to be clear, I didn't make that argument just once. Remember, the whole rhetorical strategy was edgy, abrasive bullshit designed to bait arguments. And it, it worked. I mean, arguments were had. Smarmy worm shit isn't better. It's worse because it's the language of progressivism, the tone of progressivism, shielding abuse. It, but it's lawful evil shit. It's, it's smarmy. It's horrible. Um, and it's it's disgusting. You're trying to act like oh, I stopped being one of those big, bad debate bros. This is much more psychotic looking. You look like a fucking lunatic. OK. Live streamer, you know, you, you have a hot take or you make a, an abrasive argument. Uh, you know, chat brings it up in the future. You argue about it again. I'm sure there are a million clips of that argument from different streams, but it's all the same damn thing. You know, it's like it's like taking 500 photos of me getting in a, in a car accident uh, and then saying it's, it's 500 different car crashes. It's all the same stupid fucking argument. Unfortunately. Five years back, it took me a little while to catch on to how fucking stupid and self-destructive my edgy argument was. Here's fun context, though. Last week, you had cartoon child sex abuse material on your hard drive. I wasn't really seeing any negative consequences from employing this rhetorical strategy. I mean, it would bait arguments from chat, of course, like I got those disagreements, uh, but that was what I was looking for. So I didn't interpret that as a sign of the argument itself being flawed. You know, it wasn't until I brought it up in a debate with Vegan Gains, uh, a far, far larger YouTuber, that... I somehow managed to make look sane. Vegan Gains is a fucking lunatic. Like, I don't know if you have ever seen Vegan Gains compilations, but if you want to see somebody who's an absolute fucking psycho, look into Vegan Gains. This is a guy who holds up knives and guns and threatens people who eat meat to, like, meet him somewhere, like, at a, at a county fair or something so they can fight, uh, and he makes implications that he's going to kill them. Like, he's a fucking lunatic, and you made him look sane. Realized how people outside of my community bubble... By the way, clip number two, the Vegan Gains debate, this is another section. It's the same argument. Pedophiles, right, who buy child pornography, mm -hmm. would you say they should not be held responsible for doing that? Yes. Really? Even mm -hmm. though they're directly supporting child rape? 
Yeah, I think that's it's uh, it's hypocritical. If if I because I, I bought my computer and the silicon in it was farmed in Africa by slaves, and I shouldn't be held accountable for the computer that I have, which was unethically made. Which is why people with child porn, uh, they're doing the same thing as me. Uh, in fact, I might have cartoon child porn on my hard drive right now. I can do that. And that's legal and that's... no one's going to call me out my shit. Then, yeah, I have to be consistent in that respect. Okay, look, um, I, I think there's levels to this. So I wouldn't equate buying a computer to buying child pornography. Um, I mean, it's in order to pretty much have a job anymore, you need a computer. Uh, so do you really think it's reasonable to equate something like buying something that might cause some amount of uh, cruelty exploitation in the world um, that you need for your job just to be able to like not be homeless to something that you're buying purely for very shallow personal pleasure that causes horrible, irreparable damage to somebody uh, lifelong. I mean, we can we can actually like partition it out. I don't know how much child pornography goes on the market these days. I haven't exactly checked, but I'd be willing to bet that. So Vegan Gains actually, he made the same argument I made. I don't know if you notice. Uh, it wasn't the it, it wasn't worded the same way, and it didn't have anything to do with the means of production. But the way that he referred to how the computer was made was that it might have exploitation and terrible labor associated with it. It might, meaning it doesn't necessarily have to have that. When you buy the computer, you're not going, I want a computer because I know a slave had to mine the components for it. <laughs> That's not the reason you have a computer. And a computer doesn't need to be made that way, okay? And, and, and this is where some people like to say, well, cartoons, cartoon child sex abuse material. That's, it's, it, there's no direct harm to a human being. So it's a different thing. Here's the problem with that. It is an ideological product. I've heard some people say, like, the violence in video games is glorified and uh, therefore it's the same thing. Like, because people understand that the violence in a video game or a movie, it's not good. It's the same thing as cartoon child sex abuse material, but I'm going to argue that it's not because the violence, it's not something that uh, the person who is watching it knows that they shouldn't have and just wants to be titillated. They want to jack off at the violence in the movie or the video game. And with violence, there is some situations where that is acceptable. Like it, it, as much as like, I don't like war, uh, some wars are necessary, like stopping Nazi Germany. That was necessary. That was a war. There isn't a situation like, like I, I've seen lots of people make comparisons between other types of content that depict something horrible as being the same thing as child sex abuse material. But here's the difference. The child sex abuse material as a cartoon is still harmful to children while it doesn't necessarily directly harm uh, a child it does ideologically justify the sexual abuse of children it's still a huge huge problem that feeds into the abuse of children it's an ideological justification it the thing that it's telling the person consuming it is different than the thing that tropic thunder uh is telling the person consuming tropic thunder when somebody's blown up you get what i mean like you don't you don't watch that and go, ha, I am hard. I got a jacket, you know? That's why he's like he's there's even clips of him saying we've all jacked it to Lolly, you know? No, no, we haven't. We have not. Because it's something fundamentally different from what is ideologically um acceptable. You're consuming it because it's abuse of a child. It's just a cartoon of it. It's an artistic depiction of it. The reason you're consuming it, though, is specifically because you're sexually titillated by the abuse of a child. That ideologically justifies the abuse of children. That's the problem with the cartoon version of it. And, and I wanted to address that because I'm sure somebody out there is eventually going to bring up the idea that cartoon child sex abuse material is different and in a way, it kind of is, but not in a way that I think lets him off the hook for any of these arguments. He still was in possession of depictions of children being sexually abused.
ultimately, I'm just saying that uh, depictions of children uh, being sexually abused is ultimately something that feeds into children being sexually abused. The uh, the total amount of suffering that goes into um, the, the child slaves that might not like the silicon in Africa, you know, in terms of me supporting that industry. I mean, that's pretty bad. And I didn't have to buy a computer this big. I could have bought something smaller. I could have bought a little Chromebook. Um, you know, I don't wonder how many more hours slaves had to mine up that silicon to justify me being able to own this. But um, I'd go well, with the two clothing I wear put together by slave shop work or sweatshop workers, sorry, glasses, like like everything. And, and if you wanted to step beyond the slavery element, like all of the um, stuff that I buy, it goes towards corporations. I believe that wage slavery is unethical, the exploitation of workers and everything you buy contributes to that unless you're buying from a co-op. Okay, well, see, Including all of this context doesn't make it better because you're still talking about something that isn't something else. You're flattening it. You're acting as though these are materially the same thing when they are not. There is no situation in which the overwhelming majority of research out there should be thrown out. Like it all says, and this is not because of capitalism. And this is coming from somebody who is a self-professed communist and anti-capitalist person, but it is not because of capitalism. All of the research indicates that there's severe psychological harm from it, and that has nothing to do with the mode of production. Look, um, there are, like, I think we could both agree that reducing suffering in the world is a good thing, correct? Even if you can't get rid of all of it at once? It's always a good thing to reduce suffering, yes. It's insane to me that I needed that kind of external confirmation to understand how bad it looked, how bad the argument was. But I have a very low opinion of the me in a lot of these older clips. It just makes me look fucking stupid, to be honest. I look so dumb. I got poo-poo pants. I've got poo-poo pants. My pants are full of poo. Oh, and also my hard drive. It's full of cartoon child sex abuse material. Engaging in this kind of argument doesn't make people want to, you know, they, they don't get like blustered and, and, and confront you in a debate about labor laws. It makes them want to call you a pedophile, obviously. So yeah, that's the explanation for the argument. Like I said before, it does reflect really poorly on me, but only in regard to my uh, intelligence and character. No, uh-uh, no. That argument reflects on what you think. Not your intelligence and character. Uh, I guess character, but in a different sense than what you're saying. You're saying character as in yourself, your person, how you are. I'm saying character as in the defining aspect of a thing that makes it the thing. The character of your argument is severely fucked. And it has nothing to do with how intelligent you are. Not any sort of paraphilia. Uh, the clip is from very early on in my career. I think the original stream VOD was actually lost I don't when my care. Twitch channel was first banned. But while looking for video context to add, I ended up finding this ancient effort from a fan of mine, presumably, to provide context to that clip. I don't know who made this. I hope they're doing well. None of it is- Yeah, I agree. None of it is ethical. But we've already made this social decision that people are not responsible for the systems by which the stuff they own is produced. We've already made that decision. You're right, but you're kind of revealing your power level. No, this is exactly what I'm, this is exactly what I fucking mean. I'm right, but I'm revealing my fucking pedo power level because I'm right. No, this is a moral inconsistency in society. The answer should be that all of these things are bad. Hopefully that makes what- No. All of these things are bad. No, uh-uh, no, absolutely not. That is not a good argument. That doesn't make it clear. It is necessary to mine cobalt in a society where technology has advanced. We do not have to do it the way that we do it, or the way that it could get better is for us to change the mode of production, and it completely fixes that. Child sex abuse material, which you had cartoons of on your hard drive, Vosh, is not the same thing as that. So no. Hopefully that makes what I was doing there a little more clear, even if the way I chose to do it was really, really stupid. So- See, that's the problem. You're just saying the way that you said this was stupid. No. The argument you made isn't just stupid, it's dangerous. You are giving cover for no ethical consumption under capitalism to excuse child sex abuse material. And on top of that, a, a week or so ago, you had cartoon child sex abuse material on your hard drive. There you go. Uh, that right there, that's the basis of like 90% of the pedophilia accusations that people make against me. Hopefully, I explained it decently, in spite of the fucking hurt. I don't give a shit if you're a pedophile or not. I give a shit what you materially do, okay? There may be reasons that you have that shit. I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not claiming to be inside your brain. I don't want to know why you have it. I don't care. What I know is that you have it, okay?
and there's a reason you have it, and it's something that's fucked up because there's no good reason to have it. And whatever that reason is, whether you're a pedophile or for some other reason, you need help. You need to stop making content. You need to apologize, say that you never should have made any of these arguments for any reason, and it doesn't matter what the context is. You need to go back on all of it and say all of it was wrong. Every aspect of it was wrong. No aspect of it was right. I shouldn't have made this argument because it undermines the actual argument to give cover to child sex abuse material. What you need to do is understand that that's the effect of the argument. And therefore, it doesn't matter. The context doesn't matter. You need to go back on all of it. You need to say absolutely every single aspect of it was wrong. Not dumb. Not I shouldn't have made the argument this way. There's no way to make the argument. It is a bunk argument. It is materially wrong. You are materially wrong. Okay? And then if you bring ethics into it, it's much scuzzier. Like, just to be clear, you look much worse given that you're making these arguments from an ethical perspective. I'm actually giving you the out. You can say, oh, I didn't see it that way. I was completely wrong. I'm sorry. I take it all back. I should have never made that argument ever. And not because I think that I did it a certain way, but because it is a bunk argument that is bad. I am going to stop making content for a few months, and I am going to get help. That's what you need to say, Vosh. Herculean effort uh, I made five years ago to make it completely inexplicable. Uh, I'm I'm so, so tired of explaining it. I, I sometimes see people say I'm always talking about child pornography. You just spent a half an hour talking about how people call you a pedophile and say, well, that covers most of it. <laughs> but what they're referring to when they say that is me defending myself from that clip, from people bringing it to me. Like, like it's it's like this nonstop. It's it's Sisyphusian, truly. Like, I, 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 I cannot tell you how much I hate the me in that clip. The amount of trouble he's caused for me, you know, honestly... A you hate him because he caused you trouble. That's why you hate You just told us. You don't hate him because he's making a disgusting argument that ultimately justifies child sex abuse material. You hate him because he's making trouble for you. You hate him because of the way you made that argument. You should have made that argument with something else. Well, it's a wrong argument. If you made it with something that was materially not abusive, we'd be in a different situation. But the fact is... You stuck to your guns for years. Years. A car crash would have been less trouble, I tell you. Uh, monumentalist, give me a broken leg. I swear to God, it's so, so, so stupid. It's, I don't want to explain it anymore. It, 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 please let this stand as my ex- Stop explaining it then! Stop explaining it! Stop! Stop telling us! We're 26 minutes into your video! You've done nothing but explain it! You don't need to explain it! Stop addressing it! Stop! No more! Stop! Do not talk about it anymore! Say it was wrong! Walk away! Get help! Explanation, please, God. It's embarrassing. I look so stupid. Even with a charitable explanation, I look stupid. It's not that you look stupid! You look like a fucking pedophile! That's why people call you a pedophile, you stupid fuck! I'm not calling you one! I'm saying you're sick! And whatever the fuck this is, you need help! Stupid. Let's move on. So, thanks to my indefensibly stupid, let's call it child labor art. I got poo-poo in my pants. I got poo-poo. I got poo-poo in my pants. My pants are full of poo. Please change my diaper. Please change my diaper. I need a new diaper. I had given people a very easy in with which to attack me. Now, again, to be clear, I really, really don't fault people for thinking the worst of me on account of those clips. I really didn't do myself any favors in that regard, and I've been dealing with the social consequences of them for the better part of five years now. You need mental help. You need treatment. You need to go to a doctor, a professional. You need help. You know, of my poor rhetoric. I just want to make it clear that I'm not lumping everyone together in like a your bad faith if you criticize me category. Of course, there are still people who act in bad faith. And not all the people who wanted to attack me were interested in being honest about it. I'd made it really easy for people to make... Uh... If there's one thing I don't think anybody is going to tell me in uh, like the amount of emotion I've displayed on this. I don't think that anybody can say, I am not saying what I truly believe. I can't remember a time that I've been this mad at content. 
like for one. I really can't. You know, pedophilia accusations against me. But the problem was once I stopped making the child labor argument, I stopped making the child labor argument. You know, you just spent 27 fucking minutes making that argument, you stupid fuck. Holy shit, there is no, there is nothing that makes me this upset. And this person is is sitting here worming his way around pedophilia accusations that, like, to be frank, I don't think are really the problem. I don't really care why you have child sex abuse material cartoons. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I don't want to know. I don't want you to explain it. I don't want to know any of that. What I want you to do is to go get help. Stop fucking acting like this shit is okay. Stop fucking telling us you can explain it. One category of disingenuous pedophilia accusation that I find particularly maddening is when they're cut from a video in which I am clearly arguing that our society has a, a, a tendency to fetishize youth in girls and that it's bad. Essentially, I'll say, our society broadly has a serious problem fetishizing young girls. The average American man would be most attracted to. Which hypothetical strip club would be the most crowded if they all open tomorrow? I think it would be somewhere from 14. This no, I think it'd be somewhere from 14 to 17. What a crazy clip. That guy I'm talking to in that clip, Mr. Girl, is, well, if he's not a pedophile, he does an amazing impression of one. I'll say that much. And he, he spent that in... <laughs> well, I'll say that much. <laughs> charming. So fucking charming, sir. This is a socialist. Somebody that... Whether I like it or not, I have to account for when I talk to somebody. When my aunt gets on YouTube and types in socialism, the chance that she will see a Vosh video is extremely fucking high. And do you know what she's going to think when she sees any of these arguments? Any of these arguments? She's going to think that socialism is for pedophiles. The age of consent should be lowered in socialism because the power differentials will be resolved. I don't think that the power differential between an adult and their child should be resolved. I just don't. I said this in my video. My daughter at the age of three was hellbent on running into traffic. I exercised my power over her every single fucking time. I picked her up and did not allow her to run her psychotic ass into traffic. That's why people are mad at this. A, I'm a socialist. I have to reckon with everything you say, because you are going to be something that everybody who knows me gets on YouTube and tries to find something where they can learn about something maybe I've said, they're going to find this guy before they find me. So I have to deal with that. And I'm a parent. I think about how my children exist in the world. I, I care about my kids. I want to protect them. That's why I'm fucking this mad. That's why. It's both of those things. I'm going to say that the parent one's probably the bigger thing. It's probably the thing that gets me much, much more angry. Like, I, I probably wouldn't be yelling in the way that I'm yelling. Higher goddamn debate being a creepy piece of shit to me, asking me weird fucking questions. I think You're when he first got on call, he wanted to talk about how he thought he could have debated Hitler out of doing the Holocaust. You know, it started funny crazy like that, but over time it just got creepier and creepier. And eventually I, I just kicked him. Uh, from the call in disgust. He's one of the reasons that I don't have a debating all comers policy anymore. You know, you got to filter just, some of I these people. So, all right, uh, where's the context, right? Well, here's a clip from that debate of Mr. Girl asking me that Mr. question Girl. the first time. I don't here's a thought experiment. Like, I don't even... I'm going I'm to open a, uh, that he says in those debates, a um, string of strip clubs it. in Las Vegas. And it's going to be called Mr. Girl's uh, Whatever You Want Emporium. Okay? Mm -hmm. and like, a lot of what this guy says is basically like attempting to Honestly, I in this debate, I think Vosh did a lot of attempting to guess what Mr. Girl was going to claim in his responses. And to be frank, I just I don't care about this at all. This is not my problem. I think making this a big thing was a mistake on the part of H3H3 because I don't care. I just do, I'm going to even I'll even go ahead and skip the Mr. Girl stuff because I think Mr. Girl is a person who also needs help, needs to get off the internet and and get some fucking help. I don't I don't think that this debate really advances any anything that I really care about so I'm just I'm just going to skip it. I'm not interested in in whatever his opinion on cuties is. We've all jerked it to Lolly at some point or another. We have at some point in our lives been going fucking crazy on some hentai site and we've been fucking stro <clears throat> stroking as hard and fast as we can and then after we nut we go back look over our history chat and we go like, "Oh jeez. Oh boy." Some of these girls looked pretty young. Oh, boy.
That's I will say <laughs> I did enjoy H3's usage of that soundbite. They they played that and then they played a foghorn. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Okay. Oh boy. I'm confused. I'm confused. I'm confused. Some of these girls look pretty young. Yeah, this one definitely sounds rougher than the last two clips, uh, uh, but it's, uh, you know, it's a bit. It's a joke. A bad joke. I can explain it. I don't think that'll make it any funnier. Uh, the intended comedy element of an indiscriminate whirlwind masturbator being used to draw attention to a problem. Are you fucking kidding me? You're saying that? Nah, that was just a joke, guys. That's really your argument against that? I'm sorry. Like, this video is called the context video, right? See, it says the context video. So you making that joke is context. It's context for everything else that people have a problem with. That problem being the ubiquity of Lolicon in hentai sites. I, I, I don't really know how anyone could get like a serious vibe from that. Like there's any kind of like, you know, grave point being made. You don't know how anyone could get a serious vibe from that. You, you don't know how anybody could go back after you've made years of child porn arguments. How in the last week it was you put onto your stream that you have cartoon child sex abuse material on your hard drive and you don't understand how somebody could take that seriously. Does this, does this guy have a romantic partner? Because I just want to say this right now, that person needs to get the fuck out. Like, they need a plan to get away because I guarantee this person is horrific to them. Like, the way that this is how he attempts to get out of this, this is gaslighting. Ian needs, needs to stop doing this shit, get off the internet, and get professional help. I'm gonna say he should join, um, SA, um, Sex Addicts Anonymous. Like, I think that's one of the things that he should do. He should get professional help, and he should join Sex Addicts Anonymous. I think these are both in incredibly important things for him to be a functional human being in a normal person's society. Which, by the way, all of these people, the reason they've doubled down and they keep trying to explain it is because they have no connection to the normal world. He has spent all of this time building and curating an audience that is okay with this insane shit. He's not going to lose his audience. Like, it, they're not going to stop watching him and force him to, to take a look at himself. He has to actually choose to stop making content because he's just going to continually be rewarded for following that incentive. He is not going to lose his audience over this because he's curated an audience that's okay with this. And before anybody says that's a trans thing, I think that this is horrible for trans people because uh, the fact that this guy gets to act as though he is an authority on those issues. And by the way, he very much does act like that. That is as bad for, hi for, for trans people and queer people as it is for socialists and for the same reason, because it creates a perception that that's what it's about secretly. That's what it's about. If you go behind the closed doors, if you find out what's going on in the back rooms, it's about the secret thing, not the normal thing. And these people, they don't, this, this is Vosh, this is Vosh's audience. They don't interface with society. They don't know what it is like. In society, they don't talk to people. They don't know that this is insane to say to people. Again, it's not a funny joke at all. I mean, I cringe looking at it. It's great evidence against me if the point that people are trying to make is that I P -P -P was or indeed still am cringe. So a point to their favor on that one, I guess. Another thing, left I think that he's cringe. Yes, but it's not because I don't think that he's cringe because of this, because of that joke. I think he's cringe uh, for all of the like bad arguments and, and annoying things that Vosh has done over the years. Like this stuff, it's separate from why you are cringe, Vosh. Just have pushed is the idea that pedophilia is just another sexual orientation. Like, Citation needed. Like being gay or straight. Oh my gosh. Stop discrimination. Citation needed. It's time to be more tolerant of demons who feed on kids. Yeah. I do take issue with the moral outrage here. Child sexual abuse is widely underreported. It's a huge problem. It's incredibly damaging to the psyche of young people. And as they grow older, it can lead to many negative mental health consequences. Okay. So computers aren't like that. I mean, I'll, I'll let him finish. I'll let him get his butt out so that he can talk about how 
It's COBOL. Highly underreported. It's a huge problem. It's incredibly damaging to the psyche of young people. And as they grow older, it can lead to many negative mental health consequences. However, stigmatizing pedophilia to the extent that we are calling them demons probably discourages pedophiles, people who feel attraction towards children, from getting the help they could need to keep themselves from abusing children. But Disagree. I don't think that it's relevant. I don't think that that guy calling pedophiles demons changes anything at all. So I, I don't get it. I, I just I don't get it. Like uh, uh, calling them minor attracted persons and acting as though they are uh, a protected group or a or or a group that has some kind of special need. I'm sorry, no, that's not that's not the right way to do it. And, and you're arguing against this guy from a perspective that does trend towards that minor attracted person thing. I don't know that Vosh thinks that. I hope that he doesn't. Um, but I, I will say that's where that goes if you follow the logic. You are increasing the likelihood of child sexual abuse. Do not demonize pedophiles. Demonize child sexual abuse and encourage pedophiles to get help. Well, I'm not calling you a pedophile, uh, but I have done a lot of demonizing child sexual abuse material. And uh, I am encouraging you to get help. Not necessarily because you're a pedophile even, but you need help. You've got pedophiles who have never uh, sexually abused a child, but they're advocating for it. They're like, yeah, I've never done it, but is there anything really that wrong with lowering the age of consent to 13? And of course, fuck them. Like, fucking shut them up. Just fucking smack them. But by and large, statistically speaking, there are 370 people watching right now. I'd be willing to bet that at least 20 or 30 of them experience habitual sexual attraction towards children. It's surprisingly common. To those of you who do to an extent that you feel as though uh, it may be like a problem, please just get some fucking help, my dude. There's nothing wrong with you as a person. We can't help the shit that we're into. We can help our actions. There is something wrong with you as a person, though. You need to get help because there's something wrong with you. If you are attracted to children, there is something wrong with you. Children are the most vulnerable people in our world. You might be able to control it. You might not. I really don't know, and I don't care. You are a danger to children, period. If that leads some people to calling them demons, big fucking deal. It doesn't change anything about it. They are a danger to children, period. It's not that they don't have something wrong with them. They do. That's why they should go get help. And that is exactly why you, Vosh, should go get help. I'm not telling you what's wrong with you. I'm telling you there's definitely something wrong with you, though. There's nothing feels weird, man, about this. You can't help the things that you're into. If you realize as you're like 20 years old that you have a thing for kids, what the fuck do you do? Commit fucking Sudoku? It's better than, you know, abusing kids, if I'm completely honest. I'm not going to say that I think that's what they should do, but if those are the two options, that's what I'd rather they did. Stop existing right then and there? Do you toss yourself in front of a car? No. You have to live your life anyway, and you have to recognize, if you're a responsible person, like, hey, e like, even if I just keep this to myself, like, this might affect people someday, you know? I should probably maybe see what I can do about that. Talk to somebody, okay? Man, can I just say how much I uh, hate how my voice sounds in these old clips? Fuck off. He just has to separate himself from that guy. I'm such a different guy. I don't like my voice. I don't like the way that I was a debate bro. I don't like any of the ways that I was. I don't like the way. I don't like the way. I don't like the way I did this. I should have made this argument differently. No, you shouldn't have made it at all. Period. Nobody cares what your fucking voice sounded like. Everybody cares that you have cartoon child sex abuse material on your computer. So I think that I sound kind of stilted, and I think it's phrased a little weird because I just wasn't experienced at streaming back then. But yeah, uh, the message seems fine. As I understand it, uh, encouraging pedos to go to therapy is like mathematically the most effective way of reducing the likelihood of children being harmed. Go to therapy. I'm not calling you a pedophile, but you do need to go to therapy. Now. Stop this. Stop making this argument. Stop. Period. Stop. 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 The point, I would hope. It doesn't have the punch or the charm of the classic uh, kill yourself debate tactic. Uh, you know, it, it, those elements are lacking, admittedly. But my understanding is that that classic debate tactic also just tends to push them. Again, I'm just going to say it. If you if those are the two options, if it's that or abuse children, I would rather it be that. OK, I would rather they went to therapy, but it doesn't matter how nice or not nice we are. OK, that doesn't change what's going on. All right.
God damn. I'm into like really insular, like-minded communities where they're more likely to enable each other's worst elements. So that's basically the argument I made about cartoon child sex abuse material. It's something that ideologically justifies those urges. Jesus, Jesus Christ. I don't, I don't even know what in this clip implicates me, uh, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know what in this clip implicates me. That really does sum up where we are, doesn't it? But, all right, enough with the clips that are easy for me to defend. Let's address the clip that I see. So, A, you understand that you're defending. B, you think that this was a successful defense of those clips? Second most often. It's probably my least favorite one because it is so stupid and so unnecessary and the bad optics of it aren't boop, even boop, from pee, pee. the argument that I was trying to make. Uh, here, enjoy the terrible clip. Boop, boop, pee, please, pee. Uh, please, right now, uncuck your dumb shit libcuck fucking SJW brains and recognize this empirically correct fact that I'm about to spit. It is possible for an adult and a child to have a sexual relationship and for it to have positive outcomes on the child as well. That is possible. Man, look at how- I'm just gonna say this. This is indefensible. The context that is after this doesn't make this defensible. I'm not counting on him understanding that, but I hope that he understands that this is indefensible. Now, look at how cool and logical I am calling people libcucks for having the audacity to take issue with anything that I'm saying there. Uh, my IQ must be massive the way I'm willing to, and, and this is the charitable. This is not about your fucking intelligence, you fucking asshole. Take here, saw my own legs off at the knee, you know, optically speaking. No points for guessing this clip's from 2019, you know, same as the fucking... Oh, back in the day when I kept pooping my pants. <laughs> I don't poop my pants anymore, though, except for uh, uh, when I pooped my pants last week. Uh. Child labor argument. So same era, same brain. Uh, before I can explain what was going on here, uh, we, we have to finish the point that I... You have the same brain now, too, you stupid piece of shit. It is possible for an adult and a child to have a sexual relationship and for it to have positive outcomes on the child as well. Indefensible. That is possible. However, categorically, we discourage those relationships because as a rule, it is substantially more likely that enabling them would cause harm in society. That's the difference between act and rule utilitarianism. An act utilitarian would say, oh, this is an instance where it was good for the adult and the minor to have sex, that would make it a good action. But the rule utilitarian, which is what I am, would say, even though that individual outcome was good, the act was still bad because in general, in a broader application for adults and children to have sex with one another leads to horribly destructive outcomes. For that reason, it is an unethical act. Okay, so if it leads to horribly destructive outcomes, if you acknowledge that in the second part, how do you say the first part? How do you say, like, he's even saying it within the second part. He's saying that individually, this hypothetical sexual encounter between an adult and a child had a good outcome. No. Absolutely not. No. This is, uh, like, as our body of research indicates, how you fuck up a child. You know, look at that. Whoever cut this clip ended it right before I said, but really nasty work. The but did not contradict the, the first part. The problem part was you saying that it's possible for a kid to have a good outcome uh, after being fucked by an adult. The thing that you said after that did not account for that. And I clearly don't need the help making myself look terrible. So, all right. Uh, what's this is absolutely fucking crazy. Absolutely nuts. Somehow, this guy thinks this is, it looks okay. This is okay. And, again, we are 48 minutes and 13 seconds into his video, and he has not brought up the cartoon child sex abuse material that is on his hard drive. He has not brought it up a single time this entire time. What's going on here? What point am I clearly failing to make? And why did I say any of that uh, terrible shit? What I'm trying to explain... Uh, poorly, mind you, is the difference between act and rule utilitarian. He's still making the argument. He's still making the argument. He can't claim that these are bad arguments and then still attempt to make them. There are two different ways of understanding what's right and what's wrong. At least that's what I thought back then. To, to, to understand what I was thinking at the time, I'm going to have to explain this in the context of my, my past self's, you know, like sophomoric dunning. You're not a different person. You're the same person. This was five years ago. Yes, you've probably evolved on some things, but you're not a different, you can't act like you're a different person. 
You haven't gone through any program that has provided any kind of change to you. Yes, if you had gone through some type of 12-step program, perhaps for sexual addiction of some kind, uh, you might act pretty substantially different from back then, but you have not. Okay? If you had gotten professional help for these issues, perhaps you could use the, uh, the argument you are, were a different person. You are not a different person. It is not long enough to claim that you are a different person. There are people who make big changes in, the, in that period of time in their life. I'm not saying that you can't. I'm saying that there is nothing that this person has gone through which has caused him to be a substantially different person than that time. I'm a different person, and yet I'm explaining how I wasn't wrong. In Kruger-esque understanding of utilitarianism. I, I, we have to enter the, you know, the, the very tiny shoes of my brain back then. We step into the shoes of my brain back then. Poo poo pee pee. I've got so much poo poo in my pants. Yeah, I had so much poo poo. I'm so stupid back then. I was just so dumb. Dip, 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 dip. Um, and back then, as I understood it, act utilitarians decide if an action is moral by assessing the outcomes of that action, right? So you, you throw a brick at a person, it hits them, it hurts them. That's a bad outcome. Okay, so don't throw bricks at people. Um, and rule utilitarians do this while also considering the value of broader judgments or rules that might consider an action moral or immoral by default, uh, based on a general judgment of the expected outcomes. None of this matters. None of it. So we have rules against throwing bricks at people, not because the outcomes are always bad. I mean, you could miss, for example, and not really do much of anything, but we still have rules, laws against that. Uh, be Why are we explaining it? Why are we spending this time? Why is this not a 10 minute video where you quickly say, I've made a lot of arguments that were wrong. I disagree with them now. I have nothing to explain because they were wrong. I'm sorry. I'm going to take a break from content to seek help because I clearly have issues that I need to work on. I should not be looked to as an important voice for socialism. I should not be looked to as an important voice for queer people or trans people or whatever. Because the expected outcome of throwing a brick at a person is bad, averaged out, and you want to prevent people from doing that thing generally, rather than just like letting people hope that the individual outcome of a specific thrown brick might be good. Does, does that make sense? Well, again, none of this is a good understanding of utilitarianism. So I'm trying to explain Hold on, hold on. You're basing the value of this argument based on if it is a good or a bad understanding of utilitarianism. Explain how I thought about it. I know. You'll have to read up on the subject elsewhere. Don't get your normative ethics lessons from me, please, God. So let me continue with the distinction. Uh, in, in the, I guess, uh, to keep with the theme of bricks, you know, we would consider it morally wrong to toss cinder blocks off of a highway overpass. You know, I think most people would agree that's bad. It's possible, however incredibly unlikely, that doing so might actually end in having a positive outcome. Maybe uh, the cinder block, uh, it, it goes through the windshield and it smashes the face of a kidnapper and the car crashes and the kidnappee is able to escape. To this is a filibuster. The safety, right? I mean, that's a morally good outcome from the action, you know? So the question is then, is an action morally wrong if its expected outcome is overwhelmingly likely to be bad, but it somehow just through sheer chance ends up not being bad, you know? Is it morally wrong to drunkenly drive through the, the front doors of a school if the only person you hit is, by sheer coincidence, about to do a school shooting? You know, I know, I know. You have to understand these are the high IQ moral conundrums that only the smartest debate bro YouTubers can even hope to grab. He's trying to act like he understands that these things are stupid things to argue about, but like he's making an extremely long video elucidating and expanding upon these viewpoints. In the full clip, I'm clearly siding with the rule utilitarian argument here the, that all of these actions uh, would be immoral regardless of outcome, you know, because categorically the harm is... We're, we're engaging with my understanding at the time. I feel so bad. I know more about the subject now than I did then, so I feel like I'm re-explaining bad logic, but two things set me up to fail here. Well, one thing did, the thing being me, but I set myself up to fail in two ways. My aforementioned tendency to engage in pointlessly edgy contrarian, ooh, the normies won't like this one, bullshit hypotheticals, and an extremely, extremely broad definition of can have good outcomes. Yeah, I've already addressed this debate bro brain poison before, so hopefully it's recognizable okay. here, those tendencies, in the same way that it was with the child labor argument. I'm shooting myself in the foot in the exact same way with the same personality gun. The reason I hate this clip, the myself in this clip, most of all, is because this argument I was having with chat wasn't even about child sexual abuse. It well, that's, that's not where I thought that was going. I almost thought he was going to take back the idea that it's possible for an adult fucking a child could have a good outcome. I almost, I almost thought he was going to take that back. 
it was a perfect opportunity to. He set him up. He set it up for that. But that's not what he did. It wasn't relevant. It was completely irrelevant to the point that I was making. It's just shock value nonsense. You know, all, all I'm really doing is conveying an extremely intro to normative ethics understanding of consequences. No, uh-uh, no. You don't go to intro to normative ethics at community college and the guy comes out and goes, So, anybody here think about child sex abuse material fairly often? Well, I, your professor, will be talking about it exclusively for the first hour of our time together. Uh, you know, if you were in intro to normative ethics class, you'd probably get yelled at by the professor for attempting anything even like this argument, but... You, you... Okay, so you understand. You set yourself up to say. You set yourself up to say, I was wrong. There is no possible hypothetical in which an adult fucking a child can have a positive outcome. You set yourself up to say that. And then you said what you did was dumb because it was like intro to normative ethics. Yeah, leaving that aside. And because it's completely irrelevant, I can't even explain my thought process very well. It just looks terrible, even though in the full clip I'm explicitly stating that child-adult sexual relationships are categorically wrong. It's, it's a completely unforced error. This is this guy repeatedly going, yes, I know. It looks bad. Yes, I know. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. It looks bad. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. It looks bad. It's, he could spend the entire time going, I know. It looks bad. Yes, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it looks bad. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. It looks bad. It looks bad. Yes, I know. I know. I know. It looks bad. I know. You can say it looks bad because uh, because it does. It looks bad. Yeah, I know. I know. It looks bad. That could be. That's the substance of this video. Or you know, I I did this to myself. Also, with regards to can have good outcomes, this is like a this is like a fridge temp IQ element of arguing normative ethics. If you're willing to argue like a, a fucking idiot, as I clearly am, literally anything can have a good outcome in some specific scenario. Murdering an innocent person. Well, what if someone put a gun to your head and said they murdered two innocent people if you didn't murder one? Now murdering that person actually has a good outcome because in with two possible paths, one in which one person dies, one in which two people die, you made the path where only one person dies. So you basically save the life of a person. Woo, there you go. Nothing's inherently wrong. You know, context, context, context. Uh, like, you know, oh, the asteroid hitting the planet would be bad. Well, what if it prevents it from hitting a bigger planet with more people? Wild adult sexual relations. Well, what if aliens threaten to blow up the whole planet, et cetera, et cetera. I know, I know, I know. It actually is that stupid. It wasn't even the point I was trying to make. It's just that, you know, the uh, nothing is inherently. He, 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 he set it up a second time. I thought, I thought he was going to do it. I thought he was going to do it. I thought he was going to say, it's not possible for an adult fucking a child to have a positive outcome. I thought he was going to say it. I was wrong to make that point. That point was wrong. That thing I said was incorrect. Anything. Be wrong. It depends on the outcome. Style of faux intellectualism was a pretty big feature of how I constructed arguments and made it's points not back then. The, the problem is not faux intellectualism. Go back on the point. Combining with that tendency to reach for the edgiest possible subjects and comparisons, and it really fucks me over. I know there are probably like a, a hundreds of examples of me doing this, but with like murder or domestic abuse or any other just like edgy topic. Like, oh, you, you, you normies in my. I actually, I'll bet there isn't. There is an abundance of you making this argument this way for a reason. Chat, you think that any, you think that anything is inherently wrong? Well, let me construct a hypothetical for you that you won't be able to grapple with. You see, because I'm smart, I know that actually. You know, if I do a slow zoom in, they'll understand that I know aesthetically how this looks. And therefore, my acknowledgement of their viewpoint means I have done the right thing. That's all I have to do. This is a regular video. What if this thing happened? I, like, I really don't blame people for thinking less of me for uh, that clip. It's just really bad. You know? I don't think less of you for that clip. I think the exact same thing that I thought prior. The thing that, like connects all of this together that makes me think less of you specifically is that you did all of this and then it culminated uh, about a week and a half ago with you having cartoon child sex abuse material on your hard drive you know, if nothing else my hope like this is the goal that i'm trying to convey don't don't judge me for any kind of like paraphilic interpolation of this judge me for being a fucking idiot that's what i want you to do I know, that's exactly, yes. Yeah, at least he's being honest. He wants us to judge him for being a fucking idiot and not on what he's actually arguing. I'll expand it. Judge my audience back then for watching me. I shouldn't have gotten any viewers back then. I, I was so stupid. I, I, yeah. Did he just fucking blame his audience for this? So the audience put child sex abuse imagery on your hard drive? Wow. Wow.
unfortunately for me, my presence online dates uh, back way farther than the creation of my channel, which means people interested in finding examples of me saying stupid shit have a pretty wide range of material to choose from. Before I had a channel, or was even known as Vosh, I was a frequent and notorious shit poster in the community of a streamer called Destiny. I know, that's why I am the way I am. Uh, I had been in his community for a long time, really long, and I really enjoyed the uh, edgy, irreverent, debate lord culture. Of Does he talk about how he sexually harassed uh, that girl named Poppy? Does he do that here? Does that, has anybody watched this? Does he talk about how he, like, sexually harassed and then, like, talked about, like, scaring her out of talking about it later? Or no? Of his Discord server. So let's look at some of the stupid, edgy, irreverent shit I said six years ago there that people have since screenshotted out of context in the pursuit of calling me a pedophile. So this is a perfect example of context being maliciously stripped from a screenshot in order to make me look bad, even though I'm right and uh, it, I'm, it's not even controversial. You know, I'm uncontroversially right, I hope. The conversation What's was about on? media and LGBT representation. Here's the gist of it. So uh, coming of age stories are really common. You know, like a young person, uh, they go on an adventure, uh, they meet people they like, maybe they fall in love, they slay a dragon whatever. Really, really, really common type of story. One of the main types of stories, even. And one of the biggest culture war talking points back in uh, 2017, and I guess still now today, is that that kind of story is weird and pedophilic and I guess the modern term would be groomery, I don't know, if the protagonist isn't straight, right? So their argument was, you know, you can have a story where a young man goes on a journey and falls in love with a girl and everything's fine, but if a young man goes on a journey and falls in love with a guy, then it's, 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 it's weird and it's gross and it's different. This is precisely what he needs to not talk about. I don't give a shit about that screenshot at all. I don't. Like, it was weird uh, saying there's a difference between sexually abusing children and sexualizing children. That's weird. But, like, it's nowhere even close to approaching the problem that people are having with this guy. Materially speaking, yes, there is actually a difference between sexually abusing children and sexualizing children. That's, like true i just don't understand how it's relevant like it doesn't impact your argument in any way a and also if those things by the way are different then surely he understands how child sexual abuse is different than mining cobalt surely and that's sexualizing them because because young people can be straight but they can't be gay you know because that's weird that means they've been abused or whatever that, that was the that's the argument that I was pressing against, you know, and, and, and hopefully everyone watching understands that's a, it's a ridiculous and homophobic and, you know, irrational argument. It's a, it's a stupid double standard. But that's what I was pushing back against. You know, the, the exploring sexuality there in that context means it being incorporated as a plot element. This is just a complete this thing. This is completely outside of the problem. All right. Like, it's weird. And I, I think that there's issues with what he's saying, but it's not the same issues. I, I feel like this is filibustering some more. Like in every story, right? Uh, the Last Airbender, Aang likes katara spoilers that's sexuality <laughs> look at this fucking image like this way when somebody comments on this i can say that it's it's them sexualizing because uh i didn't notice that this was a shot directly up at this character's tits i didn't notice that you noticed that that's the point of including that image that's heterosexuality, I believe, is the term for it. You know, in, in, in Teen Titans, Robin, uh, like Starfire, not Raven, right? Starfire, whatever, like normal, uh, uncontroversial, uh, you know, homophobes will say like, oh, well, actually it's bad if it's, you know, if, if young people can be gay, even though everyone knows they can be. Like, it's, just... I have a feeling the person who clipped this to like use it against me wouldn't even disagree with the argument I'm making because a lot of these like really bad faith clip jobs come from people who are ostensibly left-leaning, which makes me wonder like if, if they don't understand they're doing. This isn't even an argument that matters, okay? Like, it doesn't matter. Like, a normal trans or, like, queer person, they don't care about... Like, normal people don't care about arguments like that. That is not where people's brains go when we're talking about cartoons and shit, okay? It's just not. And that goes for trans people, non-binary people. That goes for cis people. Like, normal people, people who are not the type of people in your audience, do not act like this. The same thing that, that like, the conservatives they would otherwise disagree with would do? I don't know. It's really, really, really frustrating. Uh, nobody disagrees with me on the argument that I'm making here. I hope if I had only known then what my future would hold, then maybe I would have uh, optically workshopped it a little more. Uh, on to the next one. Okay, so this one actually is bad, and I've apologized for it uh, a few times. Basically, here I'm doing that thing that guys do where... Uh, this is a joke. Like, it, I'm irritated that he's brought this up. This is very... This is clearly a joke. Is it a good joke? No, it's not. But it's clearly a joke. You want to talk about charitability? 
There you go. That's a joke. That's clearly not meant to be serious. I get it. I'm not stupid. I don't like the joke. I wouldn't make that joke myself, except now I would maybe make the joke in reference to Vosh making the joke, and then I would be like, I'm not Vosh, though. <laughs> but I get it. It's a joke. It's a joke. This is filibustran. That's all this is. Uh, you know, a hot female teacher will be arrested for raping a student, and the guys in the Facebook comment section will be like, uh, you know, <laughs> where was she when I was that age? Could have used me some of that. And, and, and basically, like, the thing they do where they downplay and trivialize the sexual abuses of the teacher because they personally think it would have been cool if they could have slept with their hot teachers back when they were 14. And yeah, when I was 14, I also wanted to fuck my hot teachers, obviously. Uh, but, you know, 14-year-olds are idiots. Their uh, interests, desires, and preferences shouldn't really be accounted as a, a solid moral argument to, uh, to anything. So this screenshot is... I think that really kind of shows what kind of elitism that this person has. I think that it's it's justifiable to have like parental control over a child uh, for the reasons that I outlined earlier. Uh, I think that it's good for uh, me to be able to physically stop my daughter from running out in the road like I was talking about. But I don't think my kids are idiots. I actually think they're really smart. It's relative to their age, but I'm not like an asshole about kids either like i think kids are are impressive a lot of the time they always learn things and solve problems and stuff that like they didn't have prior knowledge of and they figure it out like like kids are good it sucks that like in order to separate himself from this argument somehow it ends up with him saying oh kids are fucking idiots no they're not they're just not developed like i i just i think that's shitty on top of on top of, like, everything else that's wrong with all of this. I think that's shitty. That's a personal argument, obviously. That has nothing to do with socialism or materialism or anything like that. I think that's shitty, though. Isn't really missing any context. Uh, it actually is shitty, but I've since come around on this, and uh, I've recognized how bad it is to downplay or idealize that kind of thing. So, uh, you know, I've been consistent about that for years now on my channel. Not much else I can do. Uh, all right, next one. Uh, all right, so this one looks bad. I think this is probably, like, one of the... This one looks bad. <laughs> no, this one is bad. Like... This is, like, one of the biggest problems. Like, this is why I say that arguments about socialism absolutely, absolutely, absolutely cannot be idealist. Because people who do think that it's just about power imbalances and and while you can make the argument that is material, I disagree with that because a lot of the abstraction of quote-unquote power imbalances um, doesn't really have any material basis. It's 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 somebody... Uh, like perception might be included in this. And perception, yes, is something that can influence people, certainly. But uh, perception doesn't create socialism. And thus, socialism isn't really made on the basis of this. Uh, again, socialism is the resolution of the fundamental contradiction of capitalism, the, ca the contradiction that gives it its character, uh, the socialization of production with the... Uh, individualization of appropriation of product and profit. You resolve that contradiction, it's no longer capitalism, it's socialism, um, or whatever you want to call it. I said this in my video, I don't really give a shit what you call it. I don't, you don't have to use the word socialism. If you resolve that contradiction and make abundance uh, the regular thing that everybody experiences, I don't really give a flying fuck what you call it. Uh, I'll be whatever that is, as long as you do it, because it'll it'll fix a lot of shit for us. I'll tell you that. The other things that gets used against me the most often. I, it is mostly just stupid in the same way that... No, this isn't stupid. We don't think that. Like, a normal socialist doesn't think that. A no any normal person, any person outside of Vosh's extremely fucked up strange audience that he's curated and inoculated against, anybody who has any critiques for any of this shit, nobody thinks, ah, man... If only we could, if only we could change that mode of production, man, then we could fuck kids and it'd be fine. I don't know. I, 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 I'm interested in how he tries to wiggle out of this. That the previous, like, terminally online debate-brained uh, tendencies we've seen uh, yeah, have been stupid. doing that. You know, my argument was that... It's stupid. Uh, it's terminally online debate brain. Uh, that under socialism, an economic system that I don't believe exists or has ever existed, you could defensibly adopt an age of consent set to the same level as it is currently set to in England or France. Uh, another pointless intellectual exercise conducted, I assume, because I and a lot of other people in the Discord server believed arguing controversial topics uh, through inane hypotheticals made us cool and smart. Wow, good thing that didn't carry forward into my streaming career. Uh you didn't address the problem with it. Like, the problem is 
This is not something that has anything to do with the mode of production. This is a problem that would have existed in feudalism if we had a basis for expressing it. And in socialism, it would also be a problem to fuck the kids. Jesus Christ. Um, I, I think my logic was, no, I know what my logic was. It was that the idea that economic disparities are a primary element of the power imbalance between adults and minors, and that removing that imbalance through total economic equality would rectify uh, a part of the power imbalance. It's a stupid argument. Uh, I, I definitely don't agree with it anymore. I probably didn't agree with it, like, very shortly after I made it, because I was arguing about it. Uh, uh, he didn't do it well, but um, he did just say that he thinks that is an invalid argument. I don't think he did it well. I really don't. But I'm 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 very happy to hear that at least at some point during the course of this with one of these arguments. We're on section thirteen. We're an hour in, and uh, we're an hour in. It's nice that he finally actually, even though very softly and ineffectively, um, it's nice that he actually said that is an invalid argument. Now, he didn't use the word invalid. Um, uh, he should have strongly said, you know, that's a, that's, that is an incorrect argument. You know, like, I, it's pretty easy to poke holes in that one, I gotta say. Economic disparities are present in couples of literally every age, right? The power imbalance between adults and minors is more developmental and social. Uh, so the argument was stupid and meaningless, yes, but you have to understand that uh, to the mind of the terminally online debate bro, the hotter and less necessary the take, the cooler you are for making it. Uh, great stuff, you know, I've done, I've done myself nothing but good service in, in, in the pursuit of all these excellent arguments that needed to be had. No, see, this is the first one you have said that you disagree with the actual argument. And not like the way you did the argument, but the actual argument fundamentally. This is the first time that you have made an indication that the argument was not something you, not just didn't stand by because of the way you did it, but because it, there's no way to make the argument correctly. This is the first one you've done that with. All right? That's a big problem with all of the things that you've said here. I, I think that's it for the Discord screenshots that I can meaningfully add context to. Uh, you know, like ones that I think are substantive enough to warrant any kind of explanation. The others are fake, like just like faked, like photoshopped or whatever, or so insubstantial that addressing them feels pointless. Yeah, you know, I want to give you an example of what that so often looks like, though. So here's one so stripped of context that uh, I don't even remember what the conversation was. Yeah, I, I see so, so many attacks against me substantiated by evidence evidence like this stuff so insubstantial you would have to already dislike me uh to buy into it leaving aside the fact that like if, if you're screenshotting a message so selectively that you remove like not only the literally all the surrounding information but you you the image exclusively contains a single sentence i mean jesus uh, like if that's the standard for making a person look bad you can make anyone look bad like it's incredibly easy to make people look bad if that's the standard i don't have any thing at all that implies pedophilia is good especially anything that look serious in any way, shape, or form. The only way I would ever say anything even close to anything he said here is if I were directly making fun of him, like to sarcastically repeat something he said and then go, but that would make me like Vosh. <laughs> like, not necessarily with Vosh, but like something like that. But the one sentence that remains is literally a stock joke. It's it's wry sarcasm, you know, like, um, oh, wow, uh, what, what, did, what did Benito Mussolini ever do to you? Wow, what did arsonists ever do to you? Wow, someone got murdered in your town and you think that's bad? Hold on there, buddy. What did murderers ever do to you? Like, the, the, the joke only works if the person making it assumes everyone present already knows the group being referred to as bad. Nobody actually says that when they're defending a group, like, sincerely, you know? Like, like nobody... They... Yeah, okay, cool. Filibuster. It's, it, it's a stock joke. I don't want to be annoying by overstating this, but attacks against me are given a lot of perceived legitimacy by the sheer volume of evidence. But if you actually look into that volume, uh, a lot of it is just nothing. I, I can't tell you how frustrating it is to see some gigantic uh, ultimate compilation of evidence against Bosch with a hundred links. And then you look into them and fully like 90% of those links are just nothing. Sheer filler. <laughs> like why, why would why would anybody ever use like more context when i argue against their points by claiming that they don't include context uh, completely meaningless but to everyone else it might as well be a hundred bulletproof accusations because they're never actually going to look at them i'm not just saying that i've been online for a while i know how internet drama works you hear about a person being bad you hear about them being bad so many times you know people say oh look here's the evidence of it. it's a big like you, you you think everyone reads those big twit longers 
all those big documents, those 18 page Google Docs that people drop with all the evidence of this and that. Most people don't read all of that. For, for the most part, you know, if there's a lot of evidence towards a person being bad or a lot of perceived evidence, I, I don't think that's nothing. But I don't want to, you know, I, I can't like we can't pretend that it's not. A those documents are often designed in a very similar way that this is designed. Um, when people write up those big cancel documents, they don't actually generally want everybody to read everything because usually they want people to infer things that aren't there so that it sounds worse than it is. Because a lot of the time, the, the accusations in that type of a document are not the worst thing. They want people to make the assumptions of the worst things. Now, that's not how Vosh got in trouble for this. It should be noted that that's basically how he's trying to get out of it. The problem is, of course, then not the cancel documents, but the method, the method of conveying the information, which is intentionally done so that you feel as though dealing with all of it is impossible, and therefore you don't. That is how I feel about this. <laughs> this is exactly the thing that he has a problem with with these cancel posts. And also, by the way, I do read the can when I when I read a cancel post, I read them. You know why? Because I oftentimes want to see what they're trying to get me to think without saying it. Think about that. That's what he's doing here. He's trying to get you to think a certain way without having to say it. Impossible to pack a bunch of sawdust in with the, with with the grain, you know. And I think that. Oftentimes, I am either you're doing that responding to people who have a couple of very pointed criticisms, almost always the child labor argument thing, uh, which I've talked about, of course. But but the more the more frustrating one is like sometimes you know you see people saying stuff about me, and then you turn and look behind them to see what like evidence they've mounted, and a lot of it is like nothing. And I feel like if you could tell them like, hey, look, turn around, like look at what you're using. Do you not think it would be um good for you to stand by any of these criticisms? Or yeah, I I stand, you know I I, I, st I stand by every fucking word I've said, every fucking word. I, my frustration here is clear. I, I don't want to oversell it. I have said legitimately stupid stuff. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to this deny that or, or downplay that. I'm only saying that it makes it more difficult for me to address or give context to those things, give people the opportunity to decide for themselves with the real information, how they feel about me when it's all being kind of, you know, uh, buckshotted at me in a, in a, in a, in a big cloud of nonsense. I, I don't want to harp endlessly about that nonsense because I, I feel like it does take away from the substantial stuff, but like, Look at this. I, I, like, like, look at this. This is like, here, here's like, a, here's a screenshot. Here's the kind of shit I see. Like, like, what does this mean? I don't want to talk about meaningless shit, but look at this. 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 You know, why do I see this included as a, like, what did I mean here? I don't know. How is this supposed to implicate me? Why, why is this being presented as evidence that I'm a, a pedophile? Who Jesus. cares? Look, look I, I wrap up my, my afternoon classes. I get back home to my computer. I open Discord to find the brain geniuses of, of Destiny's community having a spirited and extremely necessary debate on the subject of sex bots that look like children. So I sigh deeply, bring my fingertips to the keyboard, and type, this is why I come here. My professors never want to talk about pedophile sex bots. I, I mean, the only thing I'm doing here is mocking the topic being discussed, which was, I feel, appropriate. This was all the way back in 2017, so if nothing else, you can see the vat my brain was stewing in before I went on to make my channel and again it's just useless shit that he can use to pad out this fucking like nonsense like by this time he's gone through all of the stuff that sounds legitimately bad and he called that the easy to defend stuff and now he's gotten into all this irrelevant shit so you fucking forget about that shit this is the sawdust in his metaphor immediately kneecap it with a meaningless counterproductive pointlessly edgy devil's advocate there's constructed social environments for you again again i'm not saying that there's no legitimacy whatsoever to people being critical of me. It's just, you know, a lot of stuff gets thrown my way. So after all that, now we, we finally arrive uh, at this most recent drama, the, the incident that lit a fire under drama YouTube and is, to my mind, the only thing I've done in the past four years that actually, actually looks bad. It's pretty fucking embarrassing to say the least. So there I was uh, streaming. It's not embarrassing. It's a serious problem a few weeks ago, browsing a men's fashion site. I wanted to look at an image more closely, so I right-clicked to open the image in a new The story doesn't matter. Window, uh, but then accidentally instead clicked the Save As tab in the right-click drop-down menu. Uh, now, because I am, as has been extensively demonstrated in this video, a fucking idiot. I thought you were a completely different person, though. I thought you were a completely different person now. I thought you were not a, 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 like, you looked back at that stupid idiot and you said, wow, what a bad-sounding voice. 
What a terrible argument that guy made, that totally different person, way back then. Also, this guy's such a fucking narcissist. Like, every single time he says, I'm such a fucking idiot, it's like he knows that it's super fucking charming. It's not charming that you know you're a fucking idiot. No. In fact, we know that you know you're not a fucking idiot. The argument that you've used to nullify all of your old arguments was, you were a fucking idiot back then. You're saying you're not an idiot anymore, but now you're saying that you are. Called To Be Sorted, where every image, document, music file, whatever, I happen to download gets sent. This is an insane thing to have as a live streamer, but, you know, there you go. It, Running it's out me. of batteries So and I hit save as, and a half second later, uh, a preview window of the folder and its contents popped up on stream. And now, of course, that folder had oh, porn in it. So I immediately ended the stream and deleted the VOD. Even if it weren't just embarrassing to make a mistake like that as one of the largest political live streamers on the platform, it's TOS. Uh, you got to delete the VOD. So yeah, gonna, uh, I, I, I stream with no delay. And folks are always screen capturing the feed. So I, I knew the contents of my to be sorted folder uh, and the preview window were irrevocably public knowledge. But uh, to be honest, that didn't really bother me too much. Uh, it was embarrassing, sure, but mostly because it made me look like a careless idiot, not because I was ashamed of the like furry demon monster GF big dick porn stuff I knew I had in there. You know, I, I rambled. Ah, uh, you had cartoon child sex abuse material, friend. So, uh, are you really, uh, mm. about liking all that stuff on stream before, not a secret. And I thought, you know, maybe, uh, in a way, this fuck up would come across kind of charming. You know, like, uh, uh, that's my streamer, that fucking idiot right there. My community was already making a- What did I just say? What did I just fucking say? What did I just fucking say about this guy? I, I want to stop for a second and just talk about how fucking incredible it is that I was just talking about how he was going to say, how fucking charming is it that I'm this dumb? And then he fucking says it in those words. I did not watch this ahead of time. I can't fucking believe that. I call narcissists so I, I rarely do it, but when I do, I'm always right. Always big joke of it by the time I went live again. Of course, I knew as soon as the folder opened on stream that it would be pretty easy for people to lie about what it contained, to stir up drama or cause me trouble or for any other reason. So when later on in that stream, one or two people came to chat and they said, uh, hey, there was Lolly in there, you know, I figured they were just causing trouble and I banned them. Of course, we know where this is going. Uh, by the next day, I... Yes, yes. Those people saying that they saw Lolly in the folder that had Lolly in it. Yes, I banned those people because I thought they were causing trouble. I learned from what felt like the entire goddamn internet that two of the images in my folder preview window uh, were actually from a well-known Lollicon artist and therefore definitely intended to be Lolly shit, which has to be the worst possible way to find out about that sort of thing. Now, obviously, the accusation here isn't just that I had those images saved. That part's true, not really an accusation, but also that I must have known uh, that they were Lollicon and save them because they were Lollicon. Now, the obvious and predictable but nonetheless true response from me is that no, I didn't know that, and that must not have been the uh, impression I got from those two drawings, because if I had gotten that impression, then I wouldn't have saved them, you know? I mean, drawings are abstractions, oh, and so art style- Oh, oh, Vosh, absolutely not. What you need to say when you have cartoon child sex abuse material on your hard drive is, I was wrong, I'm sorry, I'm going to disappear for a few months while I get help. There's no other acceptable thing. Nothing. Even if it is actually an accident, which I don't believe at all, even a little, but even if it is, that's the only appropriate thing for you to say. And then you go th sit on your thumb for eight months and claim you went to therapy. That's if it was an actual accident. That's the only thing you can do. That's it. I don't believe it was an accident. I do not believe it was an accident. I don't. Not after all this. Not after the hour and 11 minutes you have spent... Uh, defending constant nonsense over the last several years. No. And don't say, oh, I'm not defending it. I called it stupid. No. You're not. You're not calling. You're calling it stupid, but you're not saying unequivocally that it's wrong. You're saying the way you did it was bad. There was one argument. One. The one about age of consent that you said was wrong in no uncertain terms.
And you were weak about it, might I add. So, no, absolutely not. Styles and body proportions vary massively, even for characters that are unambiguously adults. That doesn't mean lolly shit isn't a thing or a problem. I've bitched about it being a problem, like, a lot on stream. It just means that carelessly or inattentively Congrats. failing to notice it isn't exactly impossible. Yeah, I, I know what some people are going to say. You know, no, uh, you must have known. There's no way you didn't know. And, like, like, like what am I going to do? Oh, you anticipated my response to that, eh? <laughs> that must mean I'm wrong. Make a, a fucking evidentiary argument here. You know, like, I'm not putting up the images so we can argue about the, the pixels or the proportions or whatever. I, I know fully well that, like, 99.9% .9 of people who have heard about this drama haven't seen the images, nor do I think those people should go looking for them, obviously. So it's pretty much entirely a take-me-at-my-word-or-don't kind of situation where people are free to lie about the drawings, or as I've already seen... You have one response on Twitter, just post other really bad looking shit and say that's what I had in my folder. There's not much I can do about it, right? Uh, it's all totally unfalsifiable and people are going to make whatever assumptions and inferences they want to make. All I can really say is that. So just to be clear, he's also like trying to erode the idea that it's actually lolly. It's unfalsifiable. Nah. -uh. I didn't notice the problem while saving the drawings uh, the same way a person could fail to notice any element of any drawing if they were careless or inattentive or distracted. Uh, hell, uh, chat. Also pretty much immediately clocked two other drawings in the folder preview window as being AI art. Something else I didn't notice, and uh, they gave me plenty of shit for that, too. Because I'm, I'm Like, why did you bring that up? Why did you bring up the fact that a couple of the images were AI generated? Why do you care? Why do you give a fuck? Like, you just have to bring in this extraneous informa information to attempt to pad out anything that is an actual problem. You're, you're attempting to obfuscate, distract, and filibuster. It's, it's bullshit. It's very obvious bullshit, too. Anybody who isn't a total fucking freak, any normal person, and, and that doesn't mean cis. That means any normal person. That can mean uh, cis. That can mean trans. That can mean queer. That can mean whatever. It doesn't matter. Race, uh, creed, uh, any category you can come up with. 90% uh, of people are normal. And... More than 90% of people are more normal than Vosh. I know it looks bad. 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 No, I know it looks bad. I'm irritated that I know it looks bad and you keep telling me it looks bad. I know it looks bad. I'm not a big fan of AI art. Uh, you know, I, I think I've done a good job of demonstrating a tendency towards carelessness, if nothing else. So leaving that... Uh... That's... It's not carelessness. The problem isn't carelessness. You're trying to brand yourself here. You've tried to do it this whole time. You've tried to brand yourself. The brand is, you're a big dumb ope who's careless and uh, tends to accidentally do dumb things and likes to make uh, edgy arguments and those arguments aren't real because they're just edgy and I'm a big old dumb ope and I'm charming because I'm dumb. It's branding. I know a commercial when I see one. A stupid, least charitable argument aside, uh, someone might then ask, okay, I get it. It's possible to make a mistake like that. Why then? Would you save the images? And what about them did you like? And look, there's really no way of saying this without sounding crass or flippant or whatever, but, you know, it's, it's already a pretty revealing video. There's actually a very clear and simple explanation for why, uh, you know, for not just those two drawings, but in fact, all the drawings in that folder and all my porn tastes generally. And it's an explanation that is extremely well known and well substantiated. Uh, I, I'm a size queen. So now we've got to detail uh, his sexual proclivities. Not the kid ones, the other ones. Like, we got to know all of the other stuff he's into. Thanks. That's exactly what I want. That's exactly what you should dedicate uh, a portion of your video where you attempt to not look like a pedophile. Uh, that's, that's, yeah, that's a good productive uh, way to do it. I like big dicks. Yeah, I was looking through drawn porn. Like big dicks are fucking cool. Fantastic. Cool. Let's have a discussion about big dicks and how great they are. Let's do that. Let's do that. Because you know who doesn't have a big dick? It's kids. Right? Am I right? So that means I can't possibly like kids. If you're supplying arguments for why you can't possibly like kids, whether they're direct arguments or indirect arguments, and it takes place over the course of over an hour, there's a problem. Like furry or hentai or whatever else, I saw a big welder on dicks. I thought, cool, and saved the drawings, then never looked at them again, as evidenced by the fact they are in a big dump folder literally called to be sorted. That's, you know, that, that's... You know what I do with images that I don't look at ever again? First off, I don't save them to my hard drive. I have a meme folder on my hard drive. That's 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 the type of things that I save to my hard drive. Memes. Things that I intend to go back to and use in some other situation. Either in a text message or a tweet. Why are you saving porn? 
Like, we don't live in a world with 56K dial-up internet. You don't need to worry about the, the, the speed at which you can access your porn. You can find literally anything in seconds. Why are you saving your porn? What the fuck is that? That's the extent of the consideration that I gave those two drawings before my community and then the entire fucking internet helpfully corrected my mistake. Uh, it's hard to even say anything about it. You know, five seconds of a, uh, ooh, nice dick, cool line art, saved. And it's a whole discourse. Um, uh, you know, I wish I had an answer. It was more satisfying. But really, for something like this, I feel like people are going to believe what they believe. He's bringing this in in order for you to infer that he doesn't like children because children don't have big dicks. That's the point of this. That's the reason we have to hear Vosh talk about how big dicks are good. It's manipulative. It's, it's, it's using information to indirectly make an argument. And it's manipulative. I, you know, I do think there is a real argument to be made about carelessness, especially with regard to Lolicon and its seeming omnipresence but, in the anime community. You don't have to know much about anime you. to know that's an issue uh, with it. Yeah, I, I find it repellent, and I've been bitching about it for years. Plenty of that bitching has been on stream, too. But it's possible to find something repellent while also not being perfectly vigilant about it, uh, you know, especially in art where stylization... It's possible to find something repellent while also jack off to it. I mean, we all have, right? <laughs> what a joke! Which any artists you follow or people in the community might be doing sussy shit, right? Pardon me for taking my most indefensible position yet uh, on this, you know, in this video. Uh, in the history of my channel, I actually do like some anime, you know, and there's a lot of really good shit out. No, that is not your most indefensible position. And yes, I understand that's a joke, but it's not an appropriate joke because your most indefensible position is uh, one that de-emphasizes the harm uh, of child sex abuse. So, uh, maybe not something to joke about here, you fucking psycho. So I fucked up. This... Wasn't the first time that I fucked up in this specific regard. Uh, you know, after the whole child labor argument saga, people went through a bunch of like likes in an old public Twitter, or, you know, porn account that I had, and over like. Oh, I bet that wasn't good. I bet that didn't help your argument. Why are you bringing this up? Thousands of liked, uh, you know, furry big dick monster girl images or whatever. I, I think they found one that was like the character was meant to be a teenager. Uh oh. So what you're saying, like, I didn't know about this. Why'd you fucking bring this up? This is this is extraneous information that implicates you further. Like, what the fuck? Like, you're complaining about how you do unforced errors. You just did it again. You know, like, and it's not surprising to me that that might happen because, you know, I'm running between classes, scrolling on my phone. I look at an image maybe two or three seconds before I like. The degree of scrutiny required there indicates. This is exhausting. Holy fuck. It's that this goes beyond some kind of, like, matter of personal temperance and extends broadly into, like, how weird is it that that's something that's been that normalized? You know? Anyway, I don't mean to, like, make a big point or, or, or make it, like, a broader issue, you know. I don't mean... <laughs> what? As a way of uh, pulling attention away from me fucking up. I I just think it's a broader issue, you know? Um, you know, people, people are going to say what they're going to say. They can judge me for what they're going to judge me for. I think a lot of people have been real and charitable. Uh, you know, I, I think it's insane to say this, like, ah, yeah, he's a pedophile. You got him. I think, I think that's insane. But, again, it's not really an evidentiary... Again, that's not even what I'm saying. Like, if you want to talk about how charitable I've been, I have not once called this man a pedophile. I have said uh, that these actions are, are indicative of severe mental issues and likely um, some form of, of sexual addiction. Like, I, I have no idea if that involves a, an actual proclivity towards children. It may, it may not. I don't know. But this is tremendously fucked up. And this guy is looked at uh, it's somebody I ultimately end up having to answer for. Like, when people talk to me, when I say, like, I'm a socialist, I talk about you know, Karl Marx. L let me tell you a little bit about how uh, the means of production works. Let me tell you about the fundamental contradiction of capitalism. Let me tell you about, let me tell you about, mm, let me tell you about uh, imperialism. They're like, well, you know, that's, that's interesting. I think that's, that's good. Let me, let me go get on YouTube. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to educate myself a little bit. I'm going to type in socialism. Hey, there's a fellow named Vosh. Let me listen to what he has. Ah, oh, he wants to legalize child porn. Even if that's not the argument, what you're saying is close enough to that argument. I am saying, like, materially, there's a severe problem with equating um, child sex abuse material to a commodity that isn't fundamentally abuse. Equating those things, it, it, it's harmful because it de-emphasizes uh, what child sex abuse material actually is. It, it frankly, it makes it into a lesser thing. And it puts it on the level of things that he thinks are ethically excusable because uh, technically it's all unethical and you shouldn't be held accountable for it. I think that putting those things it, 
categorically together is a serious problem, both ethically and materially, but whatever. The argument that I can make. So, you know, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, God willing, anime culture will get better one day. Uh, I wouldn't hold my breath though. So yeah, uh, that's the long and short of it. I'm sure there are. So the second to the last section is called final thoughts. Why is that? Other clips or screenshots or arguments out there uh, that people have thrown into their big anti-me documents. But like I said, I wanted to focus on the accusations that I feel are at least somewhat grounded. If I took the time to tackle all the obviously fake or disingenuous shit, we'd be here forever. And I think it would take away from the stuff I actually did feel I needed to address. You know, again, walking that line, there is a lot of bullshit, but I, you know, I, I don't want to convey the impression that I feel every attack against me is illegitimate or at least not properly motivated. So yeah, this isn't about debunking a narrative. You know, it's about waving away the most transparently bullshit stuff so that I can focus on explaining the actual mistakes that I've made, the actual stupid shit that I've said, providing content. No, you're trying to brand your mistakes as different things than they actually are. That's the problem text and laying out my thought process so folks on the fence have all the information before deciding to lean charitably or not. Yeah, I can't make... It's not about charitable or not. It's about the fact that you've made arguments that are indefensible and you shouldn't be making. Period. It's not about whether people are charitable or not towards you. I've been charitable. In not calling you a pedophile, I am extremely charitable. Okay? someone be charitable. It's just up to how they see things. And, you know, I can't ever view all this drama from an outside perspective. I'll always be biased because I am literally the only person who really knows how I feel and why I've said the things I said. And uh, But to cap it all off, to cap all this off, I'd still like to try my hand at it. I'll, I'll, I'd like to try and present the charitable narrative. How I feel. I'm not here to counteract a narrative. Here's a narrative. Like, you can't even, you can't even not lie about that. That's that. That's outward bull. I'm, I fucking hate this shit so much. Feel this all looks with all the information and how I hope people take it. You know, again, not holding my breath on that one, but that's this is what I hope for. You know, I have said some really, really stupid and difficult to defend stuff. Now that no, it's wrong. You've said things that are indefensible. They're not difficult to defend. They're wrong. They're not stupid. They are wrong. And not because of the way you said them, but because of the fundamental aspects of them. That much is clear. Uh, but almost all of it comes from the very, very beginning of my time as a live streamer. Looking at it all laid out like this, five or so years of drama and accusations, I think it should be clear to people who have watched this far that the explanatory variable in all those old clips was my stupid fucking debate bro brain. Uh, the obsession with inane hypotheticals and devil's advocates and, and shock value. No, it's sex addiction. And whether that's actual sex or sexual content, that's what this is. I don't know if that involves uh, child sex abuse. I don't, I don't care. I don't give a shit. You have a problem and you need help. Oh, you bullshit. Which I employed because I thought using examples and comparisons that normies couldn't handle proved I was smart. There's a narcissism layered in with it. That's why he's not just disappearing. Any, like a lot of other people would get to this point and it would be their rock bottom. And they'll go, holy fuck, I gotta, I can't keep doing this. But it's not just the sex addiction. There's a narcissism. Uh, there's an antisocial aspect to it. It's just, there's, there's serious mental issues on top of what I think is probably a sex addiction. And these aren't diagnosis, but that's what it looks like from here. And if I'm completely 100% being as good faith and charitable as I can possibly be, Vosh, go get help. Go to an essay meeting and go to a therapist. Stop making content. Stop trying to explain what you're thinking. Stop trying to tell us where you're coming from. It's all rationalization for a problem that you have. Stop. It really is impossible to overstate how much I, I dislike the me in those clips. I've known addicts, and let me tell you this. Ones that are not narcissists, their rock bottom is much, much higher than the narcissists. Because the narcissist will endlessly justify themselves doing something idiotic because they're good at everything. It takes humility to understand you have a problem. And he doesn't have humility. Clips, uh, how I used to act uh, in general. That being said, the terrible arguments and hypotheticals really were contained to those shock value debate bro moments. Uh, and as I stopped being that kind of debate bro, the terrible arguments and hypotheticals stopped. And that's why just about every clip used against me is at least four years old. They're more or less contained to a period of time during which I... Again, all of those clips indicate a certain viewpoint towards things. And you claim that you were stupid back then. You're doing it right now. You claim that you were stupid back then. You're different now. Why is there a folder? 
with cartoon child sex abuse material in it. They employ a rhetorical style uh, that I would describe as a, a, a fucking stupid and insufferable. You know, even if the point I was making was fundamentally okay, I was also just way worse at communicating, which, which didn't help me. And that's an even if the point I was making was okay. I've grown and changed as a person, which is why my arguments are still correct. Just, just let you know that a lot of these points he didn't say were fundamentally wrong. There was only one, and that was the age of consent one. And I think that's because he knew how indefensible that was. I, I almost wonder if that's the one that has caused him the most grief because it is it is genuinely probably the most indefensible of all of them. Another thing I'd like to stress, uh, you know, if, if anything has been thoroughly, objectively, uh, uncontroversially demonstrated in all of this, it's that I'm a loudmouth. I, I can't shut the fuck up. I have no filter, etc. No, the, the thing that's been demonstrated is that you have a serious problem involving sexual material. That's what's been demonstrated because you can't stop talking about it and you hoard it. You hoard it to the point where you hoard stuff that is dangerous worse then than it is now but nonetheless it's a character trait but in all the hundreds of times that sex or sexuality or kink or whatever else has come up on stream uh, sometimes while i'm near blackout drunk from celebrating some event or another you know no filter i've always been really really blunt and consistent about what i'm actually into in people whether it be people my height or people with big round glasses or people with really dark tired looking eye circles or or, or pronounced collarbones or aquiline noses or whatever else you know I, I know this is a low bar but it's just it's really weird to me because people accuse me of of being a secret pedophile who acts that's really weird to you huh accidentally let his mask slip by virtue of several months of extremely loud abrasive attention grabbing optically dog shit arguments and yet also back then and now has been really consistent in wanting a, a girlfriend who looks like a uh, reagan ridley from inside job you know like that's a very novel way of letting the mask slip right like like the very novel way of letting the mask slip was having cartoon child sex abuse material that's a novel mask slip the fuck are you talking about you know no filter whatsoever it, 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 clearly a poor sense of how other people will uh you know interpret his words at times not always the best communicator and yet it's every time this happens it's always contained to hyperbolic uh debate bro bullshit it's always shock value rhetorical bullshit which which again like i know low bar right but that to me at least that's the pattern that's the clear pattern and i don't do that anymore i'm a lot better at making arguments than i used to be i'm a lot less He's literally just admitting that his unfiltered, uninhibited self is that fucked. That's exactly it. He's saying that when I've got the reins on, when I'm restraining myself, I'm making better arguments. That's not a good point. I don't, I don't know. I'm not trying to deflect. I'm a lot less autistic than I used to be. I don't know. At least marginally. These, these, these Autism has shit to do with this, sir. I know a lot of people with autism. And holy fuck. Holy fuck. Would they not appreciate you dragging them into this? But then again, I would think that socialists and trans people, probably the same. You got to stop this, man. That's the point. Edgelord debate bro tendencies led me to think that the best way to construct my arguments and convince people that I was edgy and smart. Again, it's the way. It's the way I made the arguments. Fuck off. Blah, blah, is was was through the invocation of the kind of stuff that I have been dealing with the consequences of for five years. I, more than anyone, know the problems with those arguments. I just think that they... In no, you don't, because you've talked about only specifically the way you made them. And it's not that they are invalid arguments. That's so you do not understand the problems with those arguments. Indict me in different ways than people think they indict me. I think if nothing else, I mean, I think they just make me look like a fucking idiot, you know? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. You're trying to make it so that the problem is you're a fucking idiot, but that's not the problem. It hasn't been the problem the whole time. Like a fucking idiot, you know? I have one that I'm trying to be less of, I, you know, ideally. I would like that. I, I certainly don't think I act now the way I did then. I don't think five years from now I will look at me now and think as poorly of me as I do looking at me five years ago. There has been some improvement. That's the charitable explanation. That's the best I can offer. I think I set the stage with that child labor argument. You know, me being who I am, I, I mean, I was always going to get on, you know, people's nerves. And to an extent, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. A degree of abrasiveness, I think, is a necessary and endearing trait in some people. Cope, cope, I know. But I think that a lot of the stuff that's happened in my career over the past four years has been tainted by 
the way I made those initial arguments and a lot of the stuff people throw at me, they wouldn't have thought to throw at me if it wasn't for that initial poisoning of the well. No, I'm pretty sure it would have looked pretty fucked up if if uh, one day just randomly after no context, it ended up being that you have cartoon child sex abuse material on your hard drive. Like the other stuff, I, I mean, honestly, if I'm completely, completely clear, could have never happened. And I think people would probably look at you about the same, assuming that happened, which it did. I, like, I, I, think, I think a lot of this is inertial. You know, it builds up. And I don't know how to stop that inertia, right? Uh, I mean, people say. You can stop that inertia by saying, I was wrong. I have done fucked up things. I have made incorrect, wrong, fundamental arguments. I'm going to stop making content for a while. I'm going to go get some help. That's how you stop the inertia. Uh, you talk about this often on your, all the time. You CP on your stream. But well, well, here I am talking about it again. Will this be the last time or will a month from now I'll be talking to someone and they'll be like, uh, aren't you that pedophile? And I, what am I going to do? Stop the What you're going to do is stop making content for eight months while you go to a support group for sex addiction and get therapy. That's what you're going to do if you want to actually change things conversation and link them the video you know inertia is a difficult thing to stop i think that's actually like the meaning of inertia like definitionally so i i, I could opine at length about how a lot of the hate i get is inconsistent and it's all a big popularity contest and, and i'm an easy target and, and and people get upset with me for shit they write off if other people did it and blah blah but pointing out all of those extremely true and and correct facts it, it doesn't solve the problem i don't want to be i hate how he said that he said i could say all of these things all of them are, are things that make him look better. And those things are all completely true, but what would that prove? I obviously wouldn't say those things. You just said them. I don't even really want to be controversial. I, I think the stuff that I advocate for is, is, is universally good. I want everyone to live a better life. You know, people disagree about how to do that, but cool. as long as you're on the path, as long as you think people being happy is a, is a good thing to fight for, then I think there's at least some agreement to be had. I, I don't want to be controversial for that reason or, or for... So what you need to do is stop and you need to admit that you were wrong not that you were dumb and that you made arguments the wrong way you made the wrong arguments on a fundamental level for a lot of the reasons i seem to be you know i get into fights with people who agree with me on like 99 percent of shit i, I think my channel is a, a, a cool and positive place and i and, and, and it and my community are both it's not i've seen your content it's not a cool and positive place you're an asshole. You've just spent an hour and 27 minutes talking about how you're abrasive, dumb, and an asshole. Don't, don't fucking pretend that now, all of a sudden, uh, it's a cool and positive place. No, it's a place that's centered around you, who is an asshole. You've spent this whole time telling us you're an asshole rather than a pedophile. Which, by the way, again, I'm not calling you a pedophile. I'm calling you somebody with a serious problem and, on top of that, a major narcissist, unable to see any true issues within yourself because you think you are above it. You don't get help because you think you don't need help. A, a big source of pride for me. So I'd like it if everyone, or half of everyone, some proportion of everyone could see it that way. There's not much I can do about the optics black hole, though, at least not right away. I don't expect this video will get much positive attention on release. I, I think it's going to be kind of broadly ridiculed, largely, I think, from folks trashing it who haven't actually watched it. This is something that I expect. This is something... Uh-oh. ...we all know will happen. Whether or not you agree with me on any of this, you know that'll happen. It's unfortunate, but I, I can't make that not happen. I can't, like, rewrite reality. So if I can't do that, then I just have to accept it. And I'm sure there will be, like, drama YouTubers who, who, who comb over and pause every two seconds to talk about the, like, pedophilic contour. You just said people aren't going to watch it, and then you're complaining about uh, drama YouTubers watching the whole thing and pausing every two seconds? Shut the fuck up! My frontal lobe or whatever, you know, they'll just make a big laugh right out of it. Still, in spite of all of that... As, as, as best as I can. It's, it's honest and straightforward, and I don't think... No, it's, it's neither of those things. It's not honest, because you don't actually address the problems. What you do is attempt to divert from the problems and say that you're dumb. So honest, no. Straightforward, absolutely. Like, it's far less straightforward than it is honest. Uh, straightforward, this is a 10-minute video. Max, I was wrong. Fundamentally, 
These arguments were wrong. They were incorrect. 10 minutes, if it is straightforward and honest. This is an hour and 41 minutes. Do besides present it that way and let people make their own judgments. So yeah, that's it. Uh, I'm done making all of the arguments about my past and how people perceive me and blah, blah, blah. I, I want to take a second here at the end to directly address just my audience, um, and what I'm hoping for in the future and what I'm asking for from them. Uh, you can still watch if you want, but uh, if you don't care, then you can leave without missing anything. So to my I swear to God, if the next thing he says was, I love pedophiles, I love children, I want to fuck children, if that's the next thing he says, I would actually think that's pretty funny. It would still be, like, bad. Like, I wouldn't look at it like he figured out how to address it with humor. That's not why I would think that would be funny, but it would be funny. Hi, audience. Thanks for sitting through the whole thing. Uh, I, I know you don't have much of an attention span, uh, especially because you're not used to this type of content on the channel. Don't laugh. Live streamers only turn into video essayists when they're extremely nervous. Look, first of all, I, I want... This isn't a video essay at all. This is at most you doing last week tonight in the worst possible way. And I think that that is giving you a lot of credit. This is you talking. I don't even think that uh, video essays are, are inherently a good thing or a, a better art than streaming or anything like that. All you did was just sit down with some notes, record yourself, and edit it. Like, by that standard, all of the videos I upload are like 10 to 15 minute video essays. And that's horseshit. No pun intended. I want to apologize for making it so difficult to be a fan of mine uh, and a member of my community. Uh, seriously, I'm sorry. Uh, in this respect, at least, you know, I, I think I've let you guys down. I think this is a, a great community, you know, exceptional even. And as a consequence of my obstinance and carelessness and uh, stupid fucking debate bro hypotheticals, many of you have been ostracized from other online communities or, or, or harassed on my behalf. That is by design. The less you have to do with those other communities, the more you have to do with mine. Progressive and inclusive and good-spirited, you know? It's, that, that might not be the popular conception of me and my content, but it remains true nevertheless. None of the people who enjoy my content for those reasons expected, I imagine, to be pushed out of other communities with similar values because they were a part of mine. Uh, yeah, it's because they defended your possession of cartoon child sex abuse material. That's why they got pushed out of those things. Because uh, you trained them that it was okay for you to have that stuff. You... You spent years putting forward a, a version of your worldview that gradually slightly alienated them from other people, other streamers, other content creators, whatever. And that's why it's good. Why, that's why it's, it's, it's good to stay, say this controversial thing because it's in support of my guy, my, my good old dumb guy. Because of me and my reputation. Yeah, I don't want that to continue being the case, but I don't really know what I can do to change it. You know, there's already such a massive gulf between what I know I am and what people think I am. The inertia of the uncharitability that I'm trying to push back against, it just feels overwhelming at times. Stop! 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 If you don't want to look like this, what you need to do is say, I'm sorry. I was wrong. Stop making content. Go get help. While I'm working on that, you can help. You know, I want you guys to chill. Stop fighting on my behalf. Uh, stop arguing Lucky for time. me against others, especially on the subject of this video. That's one of the reasons I made this video, you know? I, I saw so many people in my community tirelessly arguing against the worst and most dishonest shit people say about me, and I wanted them... I have uh, been very careful to not only delineate when I'm talking in explicitly materialist terms and about socialism and about syst systems, uh, but also... When I have simply talked about my life experience or um, my own opinions, I've, I've been very careful to delineate the difference between those things. And it's because I care a great deal about being consistent. And I think uh, that ultimately a materialist argument is what wins out over basically anything else. To have something that they could point to. This video, five years of drama of bad faith bullshit and honest skepticism condensed and addressed as clearly and as honestly as I could. If you're in another community and someone is giving you shit because they think you support a pedophile, point them to this video. And if they don't want to watch it, then that's that. You know, you, there's nothing you can do about it. It's, it's their choice, right? This is something. 
Oh, look at him falling on his sword because he knows how bad he... What a good guy, this guy. What a good guy. You know, I'm so happy he made this section for me, the Vosh community member. So I, I can remember how good of a guy he is. You know, he really he really cares about me. He really cares about what I what I what I ultimately got to do. You know, I I have no choice but to defend this 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 really good guy. This really great guy. He's so good. Um he's so great. He's so nice. He he knows he knows how bad it looks. He knows how bad it looks and that's why he's he's telling us, you know, don't don't defend. You don't have to defend. I know how bad it looks. Uh, that's why I'm going to defend. That's why I have to defend cuz I'm a real fan. Something that we've seen time and time again, people don't just change their minds because you've argued them out of a point. I mean, it's very rare. You have to make people want to believe. You have to sell. Now he's giving the criteria for how to convince other people. Tell them the argument. And if the argument is that this community is good, then hey, or, or that I'm good. Look, there are ways to do that, right? You know, you, you can. I'm not saying it's pointless to be a positive advocate for this community, but I want you to be just that, a, a positive advocate. Don't let me and this space and all the people who are a part of it be defined exclusively through raging against the, the constant pointless bad faith drama. You know, don't let that be what this is. You know, to be frank, nobody's ever been sold on a YouTuber because they saw a fan of that YouTuber passionately arguing that they're not a pedophile, right? When have you, it doesn't work. That's all people see looking in from outside this community, you know? We, a lot of this is me, you know? The, it, it, people see it because it's that. We're thankfully near the end of this. Holy hell. A lot of this is my fault, but as a, natural consequence of the, my particular kinds of brain damage, the people in this community like arguing, and it's very frustrating to a lot of the people in this community to argue a point that seems absolutely, completely, inarguably straightforward, straight line argument, no way people are going to disagree with it, you know, something about me, about the community, and then other people don't respond well to it, and it's frustrating, and it feels like you're just battling nonstop against tides of irrational hate, and to an extent, yeah, but what is arguing against it this way done? What has it gotten you or us? Not much. You have cartoon child sex abuse material on your computer, or at least you did when you were streaming, and you showed us the child sex abuse material uh, cartoons that you were keeping on your computer. There are better ways to make, uh, to make these points. Talk about the good bits. There are better ways to... It's, a, it's the way we made the point. It's not the point. Ugh. You know? The funny bits, all the good arguments, uh, the fundraising for charity or uh, the, the canvassing or positivity or life advice or whatever. There are lots of good things. I'm a good guy. 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 I'm a good guy, buddy. I'm a good guy. I'm a good guy. Remember all that good stuff I've done. You're my community. Remember all the good stuff I've done, right? Hey, I'm a good guy. 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 Things to talk about. You know, I, I remember. I, I remember a while ago, uh, someone on, someone on Twitter, they got upset. Do you remember? I gotta not do that. With me, I, I don't remember why it was a trans advocacy account, and there were people of course it was. in their community who were. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you, you, you definitely represented them well. I'm sure they're happy with you, trans people. Yeah, I'll bet they're happy with us being associated with somebody who, who's got uh, cartoon child sex abuse material on their hard drive. I'll bet they're really excited for that. Yeah, we're also in mine, and they got upset with me. So people following them replied, "No, don't go after Vosh. He's cool." And that that trans advocacy account tweeted. Why do you all like Vosh so much? Like, seriously, what's with all this defense? You know, what has he done for you? And what resulted from that was, and this has been archived, you know, it's, it's, it's something that I look at, uh, you know, I'm, I'm man enough to admit, I get a little misty-eyed, hundreds and hundreds of people talking about how me or the community, this community, has been, or have been uh, instrumental in helping. Uh, it's, it's, it's the fucking speech at the end of the streamies. That's all this shit is. And when I think of Streamer of the Year, I think of every single one of you. Every creator out there trying inspires me. Huh, this community, it's so good. It's so good. It's important that I have all of you guys in this community. You know, clap. Please clap. Please clap. Helping them in some way with regards to their identity, uh, their acceptance, their ability to defend themselves against bad arguments. Uh, yeah, you didn't give them that. That's for sure. You did not give anybody the ability to defend themselves against bad arguments. That is not something that you have given to the world, sir. That's good, right? I mean, that's a, that's a good sell. I, I don't, certainly, I, I don't think that I would remember this with the same fondness. That that's why this is called the context video and not the apology video. He's just saying, I'm actually right in context. That I do now, if the response from my community had been like, I don't know, trying to debate them on how, like, ah, it's illogical for you to not like Vosh. How could you not? You know, like, I, uh, I don't think I'd remember it.
if that was what people did. Of course, all the kind stories didn't actually work. They deleted the tweet asking for him and nothing changed, but it's still something we can point to. It's something I can think of. Be positive. Be the sun. Uh, you know, I don't know if it'll really make a difference in the long run, but I know it can't, it, it, it can't hurt to try, right? It's a better sell. It's a better argument. The odds are better. Feels better too. We're going to be positive. We're all going to be, not just you, me too. Um, there's so much negativity on the internet, but for one night a year, it feels quiet. This is so fucking phony. This is the most phony fucking shit. The fucking, oh, God damn, I hate. We're, we're all going to work on it. Speaking of making a difference for this community, I'd like to. Oh, no. Making a difference and this community in one sentence. Holy address shit. Address the irony posters in particular. For years now. A, a large part of my community's culture has been defined by the way I and my audience respond to people who accuse me of being anything bad, uh, sexist, racist, homophobic, transphobic, pedophilic, whatever, like any of that. And I've received plenty of legitimate, well-intentioned, honest criticism, but a lot of it is insane and dishonest and, and just flatly wrong. And, and you spent a bunch of this video talking about how you're a size queen. You talked like about your sexual proclivities at length in this video about allegedly attempting to make good on arguments that are dumb, according to you. And when people are acting dishonestly, it, it feels like there's no point in responding to it seriously. And that's when the ironic shit posting really rears up. And boy, is there a lot of it in my community about, about the pedophilia accusations, about everything. It's all, it's all a big joke to some people. And by the way, I don't mind jokes, but we know you don't mind jokes. You made jokes. Some of the things were jokes for this subject in particular, the one in this video, the jokes are done. Full stop, done. No more ironic, okay, buddy, vouch, pedo jacketing. No more memes. I don't find the subject funny. Uh, I have never found it funny, to be honest. Uh, but I have been weak and indecisive, and I was worried. Uh, telling the shit posters to cut it out would give the impression I was trying to hide all this, all the accusations, when I'd already addressed them so many times. Engaging with constant, edgy, ironic pedo jacketing from my own community always... Made me feel a little sick, but it was a kind bullshit. You thought it? No, mm -mm, no. You've defended it as jokes and like, no, uh, uh, no. After we've watched all of this, we're supposed to accept that. St no, fuck off. Fuck you. Like he thinks that we're that fucking stupid. Like we've watched this video. You put this at the end of the video. Anybody who sees this, you assumed watched the video. Fuck off. ...kind of acknowledgement, and I thought it looked better than trying to quiet it all down. You know, oh, ha, those bad faith pedo accusations against me, they're so addressed that I can make jokes about them. Look at how over it I am. Yeah, using irony as a shield, blah, blah. Look at these pedo accusations. They're so addressed. I keep addressing them, and therefore, there's no reason for you to believe them. Like, again, I'm not even making the accusation you're a pedophile. I think you have serious mental issues, but I, I don't know. I really don't. I'm not inside your head. What I can say is that your behavior is so fucking fucked. I think that there are a lot of people who would agree with me that cartoon child sex abuse material is ideological reinforcement for actual child sex abuse material as well. I don't think that I'm alone in saying that. That is, of course, an opinion. That is not a materialist position. Um, that is, I'm a parent, and I think about what ideology does, which may make it a materialist position. I don't know. I don't care. Fuck you. <laughs> Just fuck you. Clearly, I was never over it, and I think that I've given the impression of having a community that doesn't care whether those accusations are true or not, rather than one that has been irreverent about not believing them. I don't think that's actually the case, but clearly impressions mean a lot. You know, like I said, it's done. You, you can keep making the uh, the horse jokes, by the way. Everyone loves the horse jokes. H have you seen all the people out there in the, the, the drama circles trying to get all serious about them? He wants people to make the horse jokes. Why? Because they're not talking about the cartoon child sex abuse material. Fucking jokers, I, I tell you. Anything involving child abuse, that's, uh, that's a serious subject. I understand outrage, uh, scrutiny. I'll make a whole video essay addressing it. You know, I'll, I'll take it seriously. You didn't take it seriously at all, even a little. But the horse thing, you know, so, so I, you know, I say I want to be a... Was the horse not having sex with children in the horse lolly? I, I like, is that... 
I, I'm not even fucking thinking about it. Big horse, the big horse dick, a big whoop. You know, who doesn't? Everyone does. It's not serious. You know, it, it, people try to, because because this is how the drama thing works, right? You know, it's all one big like, ah, look at all this bad, whatever. But if you if you equate, I mean, again, I, I really really do think through all of this, I've well demonstrated, you know, that the the pedo jacketing people do to me is is not justified by the evidence at all. I think there's a much more charitable and accurate explanation, but it's still a serious topic, right? So when people equate that serious topic with like, oh, he wants to be the horse, if you equate those two things or like hold them in equal regard, you're jumping back and forth between making horse jokes and like serious pedo accusations. I don't know that. That, that just comes across weird to me. Does that make sense? Like that, that like it, it betrays to me, I guess, like a, a perceptual unseriousness. It, 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 it makes me feel like it's all just a big nothing and no one actually cares. You know, I, I don't stop making content. Say that your points were fundamentally wrong, not the way that you said them, but say your points themselves were fundamentally wrong. Stop making content. Go get help. I don't give a shit about the horse jokes. Um, you know, you're, it's all like content mill drama bullshit. Like, who cares? Nothing matters beyond its ability to get like clicks or views. Uh, I don't know. You know, just just dumb, dumb to see that. You know, I, I, there's a lot of work to be done. This is an election year. A lot of news is happening. Fuck off. He's got a delusion of grandeur that it's important that he as a streamer, as an influencer, as a leftist, engages in the fucking election to stop the fascist Trump. You're not that important. You're never going to be that important ever. You have to stop making content for your own sake, not just for for all of our sakes, for the groups that you supposedly represent, not just for all of us who have to answer for you elsewhere when we say something uh, that is unfortunately associated with you in some way. Take time off and get help for you and then come back and show us all that you're not a piece of shit until you do that. You look like a piece of shit. Reese has legalized gay marriage. That's pretty cool. They've, they've, they've reinvented being gay. I know. I what in the fuck does that? What? <sighs> that doesn't matter at all. I've always been on the back foot when it comes to good optics and making friends. And that's never been easy for me. And it's going to be a lot harder now. But I guess that just means that I'll have to try twice as hard to do and to say good things and give people a good impression of me. I don't know if it's even possible to climb out of an optical black hole like this, but I believe in the work that I do, and I think I've got a pretty great community. Uh, so, you know, maybe it's possible. Uh, you know, I'll be back to streaming soon. I've already missed too much news. Don't get into any fights over me. It's fine. It's, it's a good community. Be positive. <sighs> so fuck that. Fuck everything about that. I don't have a lot more to say. I think that we covered everything that really needs to be covered. I don't need to talk for another half hour after this. But I also know that if I were to address this and not address the whole thing, then he gets to act like that's another person who didn't watch his video and is just undermining him without knowing his arguments. And I'm going to thank everybody for spending the time with me here because it's, it's fucking, it is, it, this was hard. To wrap it up, I have a documentary coming out. It's called Plato is a Bitch, AI and Bomber Guy. It's on my very important documentaries channel, which is at youtube.com slash very important documentaries or at important D's, like D's nuts, except for without the E-E, -E, just the letter D. Oh, yeah, and the Discord. This is also a pamphlet version of the documentary. I put out pamphlet versions because not everybody wants to watch me talk for an hour and a half. I come out with videos on my main channel all the time. They're usually 10 to 15 minutes. And again, like anybody who's not subscribed, um, please do so. Also subscribe to the Important Documentaries channel. I'm going to say goodnight. Um, I really, again, thanks a ton for spending the time with me. It was awesome. Thank you.